All right, welcome everybody. Welcome to the Brew Crew. You too can be a part of the Brew Crew. Oh boy. Um, you know, I thought Brew Crew was a really good name, but you know, in my quest to become as humble as possible, you know, I'm trying to do what what all the big YouTubers are doing. I guess so I better put on glasses or something too. What's this world coming to? We got 75 subscribers, guys. Thanks for joining the Brew Crew. We got five online. Woohoo! I guess that makes four, really, because me and someone else. Let's just get started. So this one has 11. Let's let's start with this one. All right. So we have uh, a piece by Jack HD 99. Welcome, Jack. This is awesome. I like the red lines. Let's see what you say. What do you what do you say? Hi, everyone. This is a personal piece I've been working on. Excited to see where the subreddit goes. I've been a part of this community for a little while now since the beta of cognitive drawing. Ooh, wow. And I remember how cool it was when Jason critiqued my art in his Patreon critique video. Thanks, Jason. You're welcome. Can't wait for everyone else's posts in this sub. This is good. I like the face. I think you got some good structure there. I like the, the kind of like uh, sloppiness of it. You know, sometimes that's a stylistic choice. Um, let's see. I think if I had to make a decision on styles, I would probably like close off some of these finger things so they, they, they feel a little bit more complete and maybe add this here part right here, you know, back of the arm. Just looks like there's a little missing space there. Um, maybe, maybe get some more of the shadow underneath him here. Other than that, great job, man. Let's look at the comments, see what other people are responding to. Oh, why, are you, why am I wearing these dumb glasses? Jack HD 99 says, thanks. Uh, here's a patron. Whoa, stripes. Excellent start. What program are you using for this? Um, Clip Studio Paint, which is a great, great piece of software. Nicely done, but I guess that depends on what you're going for, says Jeff Burns Art. Sounds mean. <laughs> maybe, I, maybe it wasn't mean, but... Uh, you know how you read texts and it just, you put your own inflection into it? I guess that depends on what you're looking for. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jeff. You probably said it nicely. Colors are great, says MG Art. I really like how everything seems to be a stylistic choice. I can't tell what the mistakes are, which is a good thing, actually. Um, it's obviously very simple style. So I would agree with others that it depends on what you're going for. I imagine this in a 2D animation in children's book. Yes. Looks to me like a children's book type. Um, I've already given it a thumbs up and let's see, I'm going to give it a check mark. We approved this message. So thank you, Jack HD 99 I don't know if I should be hiding these. Do you guys know, like I can remove it because I've, we felt, or like I can hide it. I did that with the first one. Um, that way it doesn't keep showing up. I think if I hit approved, I think it just goes to the bottom of the stack. I'm trying to figure it out. See, it shows it's still up here. Anyway, let's see. Let's go to the next one that's voted. This one has seven. All right, here we go. Um, this is by Thunderclouds. Some of my art. Am I using Reddit right? It looks to me like you are. So I've been a, quite a fan of Brubaker for a while. I don't tend to co comment on things on YouTube in general, and I decided to join the Reddit to share my art and some feed, get some feedback. So I hope I'm doing this right. I also would really like to try and get an art reviews, maybe some suggestions. My goal is to create comics, video games, weird mix. I know, but video games are my favorite means of storytelling and comics are just fun. I have been stagnating, I think, and I'm not, I'm not unhappy with my level or anything, but I know I have a ton to learn if I want to expand from just drawing animals on the internet for pocket change. Here's some of my art, a mainly digital artist, but I also want to expand into traditional. This looks good. I think there's some um, little things you could do with like the trees. You could give them a little bit more form like some of the background trees, you know, um, right now it just, it has such a thin little rim light that they all feel like little cardboard cutouts. You can do the same with, you know, the castle wall and stuff. Give it a little more definition. Even even this whole thing here, you know, um, add that to this. You know, any of the, the lighting is really great for playing with the shape of everything. Um, this here, feels a little cartoony compared to this just because the lines are straight in one and curved in the other does that make sense so you know these are kind of like and then these are straight so i would pick one um if i were you and let's see it's really nice i think again it looks a little flat i mean i know you're going for some flat stuff with the the texture which i love how the texture is just right over top of it and it doesn't conform to the body it's a cool style and i i've done that a lot myself but great use of shapes and 
and line work. It looks really, really solid. Good stuff. Oh, he or she is wounded. Oh, and then the blood moon. Nice use of color. Tying in the blood red there with the blood here. That's cool. Like it. Thanks for sharing. That's some good stuff. Let's see. Is there any comments? Oh boy, I can't read all these comments. I'm glad you guys are giving each other critiques though. This is great. Okay. Well, thanks for showing this, um, Thunderclouds. Now, Pittman issue one by Chekhov. Ooh, there we go. Let's follow him. Everyone go follow everybody. Yeah. I like the um, graphic design quality of the background mixed with the fully colored foreground. It's neat. Yeah, it's much bigger. Look at that. Good work, Igor. That's cool. You can see inside his suit there. I didn't see that when it was small. All the little bubbles and gooey stuff grabbing onto him. That's really cool. Become a patron. Everyone can become a patron. Patron.com backslash Igor. Very cool. All right. Well, good job, man. Um, approved. Let's see if there's any comments. Hi, Jason. Just started my first comic book. Made only first part with 30 pages. Just want to share. Maybe I can, you can tell me your opinion. Good work. I'll have to check it out though. Approved. You are approved. Blood Brothers. No one comics. Very good. Hello, Jason and all the brew crew. First, want to thank you, Jason, for the opportunity for all of us to share our art projects, networking, become better artists. What I have to share is my little project called Blood Brothers. It's a pretty odd comic and i'm currently pushing it on webtoons here oh let's go see it all right here it is on webtoons nice i'm gonna just i'm gonna just click on these and we'll just look at it together emergency delivery room oh my <laughs> very cool okay let's get back to this okay if you guys like what you saw there jump over to webtoons and um, support him and give him hearts on his posts because that really helps get people noticed hope everybody would give a chance to read it and uh, and if you are on webtoons please subscribe i've been working on it for years have a lot of pages and stuff done and i'm planning to submit to publishers as a passion project and i believe 100 percent in the characters in the story i have a lot of other stories in my butt if i had to draw and write one for all my life <laughs> I'll pick these little guys easily. I appreciate the input. Y'all can give me any critiques. Welcome. Okay, let's check this out. I like the colors, man. It's good. Glowiness up here. Really neat. Really brings a lot more to um, your characters. I think if I would suggest anything, it'd be, it'd be, um, you have this nice tone up here. I'd pick, I'd pick a separate tone and, and just add it to all these foreground guys, you know? Uh, right now, they kind of feel like local colors. Am I making sense? It feels like they're all... A, a local color meaning there you know there's a little bit of lighting on them here you have on the pecs and on the stuff but but like these are these just feel like a local color so it feels like like two different light two different lighting situations going on which which i know you do because you have this glowiness over here and then these are kind of more local color but i'd pick something um if you're going to go this far with it up here i'd continue that and you know decide on a color source and maybe it's all red you know you know if like if these are all reddish colors but kind of you know maybe you know what i'm saying like isolate the the foreground characters from the background and see how you did this really neat tone back here with the color and it's all blues do something like that with all the foreground characters okay i just ruined your drawing let's move on and here's your web comic which is awesome i like how like intense it starts out <laughs> good stuff man thanks for sharing it I love it. Okay, let's see what else do we got. Into the Spider-Verse. Holly Day. Hey, Holly. You gotta all follow Holly. Spider-Man, Into the Spider-Verse. Have you seen it? Do you love it? What are your thoughts on the art, the movie, and the story, etc.? I know you wanted some suggestions for topics other than art related things so this is something i'd love to see personally i'm obsessed with this movie right now and i'd love to and i love everything about it i've seen it in the theater twice i'd go more if i could i'm curious to see what you think about it um i did go see it i i took my family to go see it and um my brother-in-law was in town as well so we all went to it and uh my kids are, are seven and ten they seem to really like it and i really enjoyed it there's very few animated movies that I would actually pay money to go see it in the theater and this one this one really turned my head you know the the, the previews the advertisements and how it kind of mixed with 2d animation and 
had this weird like artistic collage of almost like comic booky looking type backgrounds with the, the color tones being separated a little bit almost looked like a 3d image in the background they kind of like made it look like half tones in the background and they made it kind of feel more stop motiony by by dropping a lot of frames that was really neat and the story was uh, surprisingly really fun. I, I like the, the multi-dimensional aspect of it and the multiple styles. Like there was the little manga girl that was totally, it looked like she was totally hand-drawn. I haven't seen it twice. I've seen it once. I did feel like the ending was, was a little bit kind of like strobe light effect with within that area that, and it kind of was a long scene where they were fighting in that, in that area. I don't even remember. I don't know what it's called, um, where the, the dimensions were all coming out of. So in my older age, I feel like that kind of stuff uh, wears at me a little bit. But um, I think that would be my only complaint with the movie. I, I was really pleased with it. And I like the different Spider-Mans. I like the different versions of Peter Parker and the different versions of... And, and kind of introducing all the other characters. You know, I, I haven't followed Spider-Man in a long time, though, either. So, so I don't know what kind of uh, rules they're breaking from the comics and not. But I'm happy that they went that way direction and i've actually worked with that director um i worked with him just a little bit at dreamworks for probably a week i was i think i did some after effects for a shot in um did he work on guardians of the not guardians of the galaxy the guardians movie the dreamworks guardians movie uh peter ramsey is his name i think right right i think so i, I didn't have really like a, a working relationship type friendship with him but i you know i was in a couple meetings with him with a big old group of other people, so he probably doesn't even remember me. And I, I, I made some of the shots into 3D, I believe. I think that's what I did. It was something. It was at my point in DreamWorks when I was being bounced around on projects like crazy. So anyway, he's a nice guy. He seemed to be really easy to work with and fun to work with. And um, other than that, I don't have many more thoughts, but I did like Into the Spider-Verse and um, I highly recommend it to anyone who hasn't seen it. Good conversation, starter. All right, it's first thing in the morning. Welcome, you guys, to the Brew Crew. We got 80 people online now. 80 people subscribe. Thanks, you guys, for joining and posting stuff. I see some links. Yes. This was an old school character sheet I did for a character of mine called Death Wind. Sounds like a... <laughs> Sorry, I just <laughs> sounds like he's he, he his power is like farting or something. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to be a total jerk. Uh, hey, it's Arno, Ar Arno or Ross. That's cool. I wish I could zoom in a little better. I'll just look close. Just look closely at it. That's cool, man. I can't read all-purpose knife. Ooh, that's neat. I like the black and white mixed with the kind of rough textury uh, reds. I've always liked, I've li I, uh, in DreamWorks a couple times we were asked to do similar type color themes like this, like really heavy moody and then a, and then a nice bright contrasty color like red. And it always works so well. Sophia Pereira. Ah, yes, you have a YouTube channel too. She just has all these videos of her drawing cool stuff with ink. Oh, and look here. This must be it. Uh, she changed her voice. So there you go. You can see the whole work in progress. You guys, check out Sophia's channel. It's just tons of that stuff. She's a really good artist. Here we go. January drawing challenge progress. I'm looking at this drawing right here. This is really neat stuff. These look, these must be all on pieces of paper, no digital, which that is a whole nother skill in itself. This is awesome. I love the form. There's some really great, like, I love the, the forms and the shapes that you really feel like it has depth to them and that they're 3D. This guy's totally thinking about for sure really cool love it i like creepy is a january drawing challenge a, a thing because those are really neat drawings thanks for sharing that those are by ethan the board ethan the board 
Okay, super excited about this subreddit. Jason's channel has been a major motivator for me in the past month. Good, thank you. These are weird and wonderful. What drawing challenge is this? Or is this a personal? Okay, here we go. Uh, cr create January. <laughs> create January. Create January in 2019. Everybody, if you want to check out more of this kind of stuff, there's the hashtag create January 2019. <laughs> uh, anyway, so that's cool. So where can we find your work? Um, it'd be great if you guys, again, post links to your site or your YouTube channels or wherever. Love this stuff. By Advanced Guard. Advanced Guard. Um, Matt Krotz. Thanks for posting this here, buddy. Uh, Matt sent me his comic in the past or at least samples of it and i love his style i love the um let's just see if we can zoom in a little more here we go i love the like the the decision to make certain characters certain color themes and then it just helps complexity be simplified a lot like you know you have this guy in the foreground you have these guys in the background it's a whole nother scene practically um and yet the detail remi remains because like this stuff would have gotten, this stuff here would have gotten mixed in with this guy's details, but because of that color separation, it just is super clear. And so you can get away with, with some weird details that wouldn't really be hard to, that would normally be hard to, to see. Um, and then up here, you know, it's, an, it's that same kind of brownish tone. And then here there's some red in between it to kind of show separation. Just really cool decision-making, Matt, on the color theory. And, um, yeah. You guys check out Matt Kratz's book. I think it's pronounced Cry. It, it's all this style of digital art, though. It's really nice. I really like it. So keep going, Matt. Thanks for posting. Um Please post some like work in progress like you did in the, what was it? Discord? I already forgot what it's called. Showcasing some personal stuff. What is it? What are we? Oh, do I got to go to a link? Hi, first of all, I like to say, I like, I'd like to be thankful for being part of the subreddit community. One of Jason's latest videos, Power of Personal Projects, got me inspired to keep doing something I had always wanted to do with, which is comics. This is cool. It's kind of probably really small. Oh, look at that violence. I like the, I like the line work. Oh, that's cool. Big old giant. Okay. Good stuff, man. Keep going because, um, you know, that's what it's all about is just continuing to make progress and finish projects, just like the power of personal projects. And, uh, so finish that project and, and keep going because that's, that's what really unlocks the doors, at least in my opinion and in my experience. Cap Comics Ultimate Theater. Hi, Jason. Hi, everyone else. I completely want to join the Brew Crew. Uh, my name's Doug, and my comic's name is Ultimate Theater. If any of you, if any of you spare the time to read, I'm looking for critiques. And as I keep drawing, I want to improve. Ultimate Theater, Full Color Chapter 1. Download free PDF or read free online at kappacomics.com. Check it out. So, um, Kappa Comics, show some, show, show some work in progress or some sketches or something specific for this forum. What if Snow White was a g -g ghost? Oh, is this by Bob? Bob Crumb. I like that on intro. He basically colors for a living. So I saved some of the them all out and I can work on them all individually so that then I can put them together. You guys, Bob's a great artist. Um, he's He approached me about helping with cognitive drawing and, you know, I don't know uh, what, what exactly we're going to do, but um, he might be one of the guys to help out. Um, he was very, seems very passionate about it. Um, he was on, he's one of my patrons. He was, um, on our, my last Q and a video call, really cool guy. So, um, check out Bob crumb. Look at that. Really nice line quality. 
Look at that. That looks great, Bob. Nice separation with the foreground and the background colors. Kind of muting or graying out that background and making it a little warm. All right, guys. Check out Bob's channel. Thanks for showing this, Bob. Um, he does a bunch of these videos. What if, you know, mixing two different things together and discusses his thoughts over top of it as he's working on it. Um, I think it's probably some really good educational stuff, especially if you're starting out. He gives a lot of good little pointers in there. Um, and he's a professional artist. He's been doing it for a long time, as far as I know. So um, from what I remember anyway. Thanks, Bob, for sharing. One more here. What is this? Chris Pat Pratt battles the amazing atheist with the Bible. Okay. Is this a joke? Open the gate and kiss me. Are you supposed to love and share? Three. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> this is so long and random. I don't even know. I don't know what I think about this. <laughs> These drawings. <laughs> uh, I don't know what to say about it, man. Um, did you make that imaginary debates? I might have to look at it again to fully understand it, but but maybe it's one of those kind of videos where the more you look at it, the more you get the, the layers of depth. <laughs> I'm glad you're doing something unique. That's definitely unique. <laughs> and there were some genuine moments that made me chuckle. So good job. Thanks for hanging out with me as I watch this stuff. Um, so this video was edited by... This is, this is where the magic is happening. Shh, be quiet. I really appreciate all the people rising up and joining the, the movement to, um, joining the brew crew and joining the movement to, to edit these videos so that we can get some content out on a regular basis. Join the brew crew and you too can post there too. And then I'll look at it and make a YouTube video about it and edit it together for you too. <laughs> Stupid. Nice. Hello, everybody. This is Jason Brubaker. Welcome to Brew Crew. This is uh, my little home on the internet, kind of. I live under a rock, and so I don't generally search things out online in the art world. I used to a lot, but um, I don't anymore. So this has uh, been really helpful because now you guys, you can curate the stuff that I can see, and I hopefully, hopefully you have really good taste. We, we will find out. If you guys want to submit stuff, let's jump in. I love the design of the characters, the suit design, the feet, these little accordion style arm joints and rounded suits. I can't tell if it's like a an alien or something inside there or a human. There's like the plants growing up into this guy's suit. That is really cool. Let's see if I can read this now. By immune. I had uh, the idea and I decided to do it simple. Now you can expect it more. The sketch is also included. Say what? I don't understand why I just read. See, that's why I don't go online anymore. <laughs> this is really cool though. I, I really like it. Thanks for the post, Portuguese Man of War. This is cool. Let's read what it said. So this illustration is part of this kind of weird universe I've created. It's very ambiguous, but might be a comic someday. I think it should be. It's really cool looking. It reminds me of like Mobius type stuff. If I find the stomach to tackle it, I like to hear your thoughts and on the illustration itself. I say go for it. That's really cool looking stuff. Um, I really like it. Please, please keep sharing. Okay, what else do we got? Page from a graphic novel I'm working on. It takes place in, you guessed it, India. It's a personal project to raise awareness about sex trafficking. Oh, that's a good cause, man. This page turned out pretty good, I thought. Let's see if we can see it bigger. We can. That is beautiful. Really good work. We can play the game. Is it digital or is it traditional? And I, my guess is it is digital. Um, it looks really good. I like all the detail in the jewelry. And um, it looks very nice. I like the little uh, stuff around the edge, you know, the little detail around the edge to kind of really push it into that world. Um, great stuff. Thanks for showing me. This was by Devander Grind. Boo, a recent Venom piece. 
Ooh, nice. This is by Jim O'Reilly Art. Awesome, Jim. Look at that. I like this, the green slobbers. I'm trying to see if it's if I think it's digital or traditional. What do you guys think? I think it looks digital because of some of these lines here. Doesn't matter though. It's beautiful either way. Really well done. Good stuff, Jim. Thanks for showing me. Thanks for showing us. If Sithra were a cat, this would be him. Can we zoom in any bigger? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I like his face in the rearview mirror. <laughs> oh man, it's totally Sithra if he was a cat. It's like Sithra and Simon like merged together. That's so great. I love it. I think, wait, who, who posted that? Dynamite Comics. Thanks for posting that. That's just amazing. I love it. Spider Gwen. Let's see the Spider Gwen. Nice. That looks very nice. It's my first creation. Okay, this is by Kai P11. My first creation for 2019, but I but I signed it 2018 on it. Year lagged. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Getting back to the groove after being stagnant for two years and not being creative. Comments and critiques are welcome. Stagnant for two years? That's crazy. Well, I mean, I know how it goes. I get stagnant with things for years too. Um, I haven't, I've been in a position where I can't be stagnant with my art because I do it for a living. So if I'm stagnant, then I don't pay the bills. <laughs> um, Into the Spider-Verse was so amazing. I saw it twice and I will probably see it again a third time. All rights are reserved. I do not claim any rights on character and illustrations. We've got perfect, blah, 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 blah. Well, Look at that, she has a spider. Spider Gwen phone. Thanks for sharing. P please keep working too on your art. There's no reason, unless you don't enjoy it anymore, no reason to stop. You're doing great. All right, let's give this a thumbs up. I make sure to give everyone a thumbs up when I see it. This is a poster I made for my Webtoon Outcast on Webtoon Discover. I had been working on it for about eight to nine months now. This experience is really opened my eyes to how much work one has to do behind a comic. I'm struggling with being consistent and would really appreciate some advice on it. Outcast. That's cool. Romance between two social rejects. <laughs> well, that's cool. Um, who is this by? Ad... Ad... Bleh? I don't know how to say it. Ad... Bia? Ad Bia. Let's check this out. Can we go... Oh, let's look at a big... It looks like you used a little lasso tool right here and cut out this logo or something at one point. You can see the little blemish in it. That kind of stuff happens all the time. It's the stuff that it's, um, until you've had enough experience catching it, was that, that doesn't sound right. I catch this kind of stuff all the time. Can you see, can you guys see what I'm talking about? This little white line here. I catch that all the time in my own artwork when I'm like fixing things and stuff, so. I apologize. It's just the way my my eyes look. They they look for the flaws. Okay, one thing I want to suggest in this picture, right here, right here, you got a tangent right where the circle comes and it touches the arm. It kind of happens a little bit down here too. Usually with tangent, like I don't know where I don't know if everyone calls it tangents, but that's what we called it at DreamWorks. <clears throat> um, this elbow is coming right, you know, it's coming to a rest right there on that line. And so what it does is it forces your eye to go and you get stuck right there. See, now the hair, you didn't do it. You had it break out a little bit and it comes up outside of the, the circle. Perfect. That's what I'm talking about. That's like, that's like paying attention to the tangents and making sure you're not making any tangents. This here, so, you know, you could fix it by having his elbow break out or, or just having it be inside that line a little bit more. Um, and it's not as much of a problem there, but anyway, that's, th those are my critical notes. If you, if you want them, let's go find this comic. There it is. I see it. Three years previous to the current timeline. Son, don't forget to keep me updated. Write me every other week. Take good care of your mother. Whatever happens. Family comes first. He looks like me. Family schmamly. Sheep, we're gonna miss you. I'll come to visit. 
I can't believe how fast you've grown. It feels like only yesterday I took you to school with me. Huh? He looks, he looks up. Oh, who's this? Is this a love interest? <laughs> Hopefully not. Maybe it's a little girl. Someone there? No, it's just a squirrel. <laughs> oh, I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> oh, of course. What's that, Sephira? What happened? She was crying. Stomp. She seems really upset. Hey, Sephira, what happened? I, I think I know. Oh, it's a love note. Right? Is that what it is? Don't read that! I love the expression. Great. Sorry, I, should I do this? Should I just go through this whole comic? I don't know anything about it, and I started right in the middle. I apologize. So Sephira is crying because her boyfriend is leaving today. Give it back! Give it back! He's not my boyfriend! Oh, wow. What a nice view you have. Honey, no need to hide from us. Yeah, obvious. We caught you red-handed. <laughs> do you two communicate via air airplane message? As if I made sure he never noticed me. I know that. Okay, my reading is getting really awful. This is great, though. You're really working it. Present timeline. Okay, so she's older now. Good job. Let's see. Got a lot of comments on there. That's good. 1,400 people uh, are subscribed to it. 61,000 people have seen it. 9.65 rating. Well, that looks like you're doing really well. This is great. Um, if you guys like this, uh, check it out. Go subscribe to it if you wouldn't mind. All right, let's approve this. Bam. Good work. Thanks for posting it here. Okay. Let's see this comic. Some nice gray tone. Nice perspective, too. Japan, seven years ago. I want more guards along the perimeter and increased security around the sanctuary. Is it true the Brotherhood captured every gate in the Middle East and wiped out all resistant fighters there? We lost contact with our brothers 24 hours ago, but where does every base has been taken? I like the, the rendering on this jaw here. That is a nice jaw. I like that. I like the shading here you got. Okay, can I be critical? Or am I allowed to be critical here? You got this um, perspective line right here, the, the ground plane right here, and then this guy's foot is resting right here. He's basically a giant. This guy's a giant. He should, is, is you know, like if, if you follow this perspective, you understand what I'm saying? This guy's foot works a little better. I, I think he still looks like a giant if you match it to this perspective, but these perspective lines are really off too. So, um, yeah, this shot, the perspective is a little, little wonky. Got some, some issues with that. That kind of caught my eye, but that's about it. The rendering and everything else is looking great. Um, you see what I'm saying? Perspective. Anyway, um, that's a good looking page though. Uh, keep it up. Okay. You, you wrote something and I didn't read it. This is the first page of my book, Demon Hunter Rave for Webtoons. Aha! You gave us your site. Okay. <laughs> I'm all critical and you actually did it. Um, so you guys check out this website. Should we go check it out? Northern Knights. Ooh, what's this? Like a Ninja Turtle type thing? Elijah the Prophet. How interesting. Interesting. Is this a... Oh, 54 pages. It's a preview, but I can't see it. All right. We'll leave it there. About. Let's see who this is. For biblical-centered truths along with hope and encouragement centered on the gospel of Jesus Christ. Very cool. Very cool. Like it. All right, let's give this an approval. Bling! Demon Hunter Raven. That sounds very interesting. Keep posting stuff here if you don't mind. A page from a sci-fi thriller webcomic of mine. I drew this years ago. Recently, I redid the lettering and started posting it online webtoons. The name of the webcomic is Apocalypsis, right? Apocalypsis? Hope you like it. I can also create art with 3D rendering software, but this was completely hand-drawn. Thank you, Jason, for your videos. They're very helpful. You're welcome. 1998 to 2017. That's a long time working on a comic. I know the feeling. I know the feeling. It is the year 8,998 AD. Many strange events are happening. 
Tensions are flaring up everywhere and things are only getting worse, it seems. Whoa, where am I supposed to go? Do I go here? Okay, can I be critical? I read this word balloon and then I go, am I supposed to go here? And then what do I go down here? And then, oh wait, but this one's breaking up through this panel. So what, I'm so confused. Where do I go? So there's some little um, problem solvings you need to do um, with this kind of word balloon stuff because if you get people confused with where to go, I'm assuming you go here and then here and then here and then here. That's, that's my guess until I read it. But the thing is you don't want to stop people in their tracks trying to figure out where they should go. So um, that would be my critical, my critical thoughts on this. These are dark times indeed. What? Quiet! Quiet! And then, where's the next? Did I go backwards? Did I start on the end? No, chapter two. Wait, that one page was one chapter? What am I, what's going on? Okay, because of webtoons, that's how you're posting. Okay, I get it. Whoa, crazy. Crazy looking faces. And then you got this really pretty face here. <laughs> I like the crazy style. What? And then wait, what? What's going on here? And then that? Is that part of, is this part of the comic? And then you're starting to break it up into panels. I will not accept any interference. <laughs> Wait, so it's 3D and then, and then back to a drawing. Oh, I'm so confused. Some of these drawings are really interesting and cool. Anyway, okay, let's get back to this. I also create art with 3D rendering software, but it was completely hand-drawn, except for the parts that were 3D. I think it's cool that you're working on this. Um, it is a little jarring to like mix things. It looks a little, um, usually when when you mix styles, it's, it usually looks amateur. Um, there's, there's some situations where uh, comics or animations mix styles and it's, it's a, for a very intentional um, use. I don't know. Most of the time it doesn't. It's for no rhyme or reason. And when that happens, it, it's, it looks amateur. So that, yeah, I don't mean to be critical. I, I, I really appreciate you showing me this. So keep cranking it out. I'd say choose, pick a style and like try to stick to it unless you really want it to, to change consistently throughout the, the whole project, then, um, it might work. It might work in that way. Thank you guys for submitting to the brew crew. I, I hope you guys are enjoying these. Uh, these are fun for me to just uh, reward myself with a little break once I finish my work. I can jump on here, record a video, interact with you guys and see what you're doing. And it's, it's, it's kind of fun. So anyway, um, appreciate it. See you guys next time. Welcome to brew crew. Ooh, look at that. What in the world? What a cool style. New to digital art and CC cri critiques. Karen CNC. What's the other C? Critical criticals and critiques. I don't know. Comments and criticism. See, I don't surf the the web anymore. I don't go into these art forums anymore. I should. Well, maybe I shouldn't. I wish I knew what it said. Oh, there's a comment down here. Let's see what the comment says. Hey guys, long story short, I used to study architecture. I can tell with by the line work. I mean, now that you say it, it's obvious. I used to study architecture, but I dropped out because I realized I wanted to create art for my living. I want to get better and I'm working on that. I got my first Wacom some days ago and started experimenting. I would love to get some advice uh, on digital coloring and understanding the color theory. Books, tutorials, courses, everything is appreciated. Thanks for reading and remember, keep drawing. Let's see if we can zoom into this. We can! Oh, this is great. I love your drawing style. I love the face, love the hair, the form. The form is really nice. You have a nice form to everything. It feels like it has, you know, weight and depth. There's a couple parts that are like a little funny, like the hand, how it comes, it feels kind of incomplete, like it's missing the form for this arm and the hand and the arm coming out here in the foreground, you know, however that would go. I mean, I guess, I guess if it's like this, then there's, there's nothing there, but it, it looks like there's something missing because of the, the angle that you have it drawn at. It's cool, the technology and stuff. So coloring, I think you're doing great with the coloring on the face. Um, you just make a shadow layer and then make a maybe a lighting layer 
um, and start with that. That's really cool. I, I love it. I love the face though. Please keep going, make it happen. That is some good looking stuff. First issue cover art for a comic I'm illustrating with a startup comic studio. This is by figure one. So they're like coming, these ships are like coming out of these portals. That's what it looks like to me. Okay, if I could be real picky, can I be picky? Can I nitpick this here guy? He's all nice and in focus. Same with this guy. And then you start getting these guys out of focus here. But the problem is that you're in space and the stars are in focus. The stars are very clear and clean. So this just feels like a bad Photoshop job. And I know you're trying to get the depth. And then this guy's, he has like a motion blur, but he's not necessarily out of focus. He just has a motion blur. Whereas this guy here is actually blurred, right? Same with this guy, blurred. But this guy has more of a motion blur. Probably because if you blurred him, he would just look like a blob, right? Is that, I'm guessing. And this guy's blurred. But then these stars are nice in focus. And you have these paintbrush lines that are very sharp and clean and in focus looking. So it's, it's conflicting. It's conflicting things, techniques that you're using. So if you want to have these guys out of focus, everything in the background has to be major out of focus. No textures, no paint, brush, stripes, swipes, nothing. But I think in space, you're not going to see that kind of shot. Usually you don't because you're using really long lenses. When you use long lenses, you do get focal depth though. So it's just a matter of picking. Just picking one. Like if you want these guys to be motion blurred, then that's one thing. But then, but then these guys aren't motion blurred here. But I don't think you would want to do it. I think you just want to go for clean and clear. So that's my guess. That's my, uh, that's my suggestion. And that's my guess. I love the portals. I like the colors. I think the, the texture in this background space is, it looks like, oh, I see. So you have this little Photoshop start speckle brush right here, and then you just blurred it. Okay. Um, so you'll have to just pick one, you know what I'm saying? Take, take your pick, uh, make a decision with it, and then it'll really help, I think. So anyway, other than that, I think like if you back up and look at it, it has some cool elements. It has some cool things about the piece. Um, you might play with a little bit more depth in the, the shading of these, the, for, the background ones versus the foreground ones, as far as the shading, like how much detail is in it or, or the contrast is in it or the, the, the color, you know, pushing it into a slightly different color hue or something as it goes back. Those are all things to play with. Anyway, um, thanks for showing. Um, I sure hope you were hoping for a critique because, man, I really critiqued it. Sorry. <laughs> Keep going, though, man. It's looking great. This one's by Mustache Brother. All right. Mustache Brother. Brew Crew. I'd really appreciate some feedback on this piece. I, I feel like I've maybe compromised on some things I should know by now, such as how light affects local colors. Now, do you guys know what local colors are? Local colors are like green is green. And if green, if a piece of grass was just didn't have any light source, colored light source, it would just be a solid green, right? So once you like shine a blue light on it or a pink light or a red light or a yellow or whatever, it changes the, the, the color of that blade of grass from its local color. So that's what he's talking about here. Um, shadows, shadow colors, etc. Because something definitely feels off. Open to critique and Witcher 3 fans, yes, that is hopefully what you think it is. Excuse me, I'm hiccup burping um, in advance. Jason, thanks for all you do, man. Thank you, man. <laughs> Godsend to the community. Um, oh, here's your Instagram. Thanks for posting that um, if you want to take a nosy. Okay, let's look at this piece. You know, I think... The thing that you're you're a great artist and it, I can tell you have you've put in a lot of time into developing your craft and your skill. So let's just put that out of the way. Um, I think the thing that I'm seeing that that might not make it pop is everything's on the same washed out color plane so that everything's everything's the same. You have you have this lighting in the background, but it's all yellows. You have you have yellows up front. You have yellows in her. You have some some greens and blues popping out on her, um, but it's still dominated by this this global um, wash that's that's kind of taken over, and so nothing really nothing really pops out at you. 
you know you don't your eyes have a hard time settling on anything if you if you back up and, and like squint at it um, it kind of just all has the same feel everything's kind of muddy and, and, and flooding together and nothing really pops out so if if you just separated her you know with a lasso tool put her on another layer and, and maybe the cat um, and just adjust them to another hue another just either put more saturation into them more more contrast into them by adjusting the contrast maybe washing out the background a little bit so it's less contrasty um, same with the cat you know the cat and her could be on the same plane you also have this ground plane right here that's obviously in the foreground because of or it's on the same level plane of, as her you would probably want to pop that out too and give that a, a darker range or more contrast in there like just me like selecting these things so like though like if you can pull those apart separate those from the background i think you're automatically going to find it more pleasing to the eye um now if you want to keep it in this range i would just knock back the the clarity you can either use blur saturation hue um, fog lighting or whatever in the background to kind of push it into another plane of existence i don't see the foreground middle mid ground and background in this those are my thoughts i hope that helps i think it's beautiful though so you know sometimes sometimes you're just looking at it too long and that's the problem you're not seeing it with fresh eyes so those are my fresh eyes that's my take on it um let's check out your instagram shall we oh a sweet little puppy man you're a good artist see this has a really nice separation you got the blues you got the warms and then her colors are all so you're, you're you know all the tricks i think i think you're just looking at that piece too long that's cool is that you man right there working out huh ladies he might be single i don't know i'm just guessing great art man um you guys if you want to subscribe to the to mustache brother you got my permission all right i think we're all caught up thank you guys for submitting and if you guys want to learn to draw i have this method i developed called cognitive drawing you can download it here, uh, 12 bucks. It's a full on pack of worksheets and reference, and it's the technique I use to teach myself how to draw. Um, you can also get the, the version where it has um, 280 pictures of this, this model that I used as well. Anyway, I better shut this thing off because it's getting ridiculous now, 46 minutes. I wonder how long this video is gonna be. Uh, <laughs> see you guys next time. Welcome everybody, let's get the party started. We got 46 submissions that I have not seen. Welcome to Brew Crew. Where do I start? Hello, here's a composition that took me a while to make. This is by Portuguese Man of War. I like the really nice, precise, thin line work. It reminds me of um, Jeff Darrow type stuff. Also, Nate Simpson. It really reminds me of Nate Simpson. It's beautiful. This is really cool. Keep, Please keep going with this and keep showing me because this, I, I really like it. I love to see more. Oh yeah, I wanted to say too, we have 161 subscribers now, 10 online right now. You guys are really uh, filling this thing up and I love it. It's been really fun to just see the stuff coming in. That looks great on Arno. I'd say, I'd say keep it loose because um, loose always keeps energy. The Blood Comic Process by Micah Champion. Interesting. I like the rendering of this guy. The detail gets kind of, some of the detail gets a little lost because there's so much, there's so much going on and you don't know where to look. It's hard to tell where to look. I think a little light, a little coloring will really help guide your eye, but um, really, really beautiful. Manual Tavares and some comic stuff. His artistry has changed over the years. He went from using pencils to inks. Knowledge of Photoshop grew, foundations grew alongside that. All right, so guys, go check out the... The links, he's posted a bunch of stuff. He's posting one page a week. Thank you, Jason, for the videos and interviews and podcasts. Uh, I'm glad they are helping very much. This looks beautiful. Is it digital or is it traditional? For the most part, it looks traditional. And I love it. I love how this looks. Traditional. It's great. I think you could have a little bit of, of line weight on this foreground character because he just kind of, his lines just kind of blend into the background and make sure to do this and that and that. Okay. 
Good job, though. Beautiful looking image. Really good stuff, man. Keep going, you guys. This is one of my son's drawings. He wants an honest review of his style. Your son is seven years old and he is submitting on Reddit. He doesn't need criticism at this point. He just needs his stuff to be admired and loved and appreciated. And um, if he keeps loving it, then he's going to do great things with his art. That's the biggest thing my parents did for me was encourage me. Pen and ink fantasy illustration. Nice structure here. Some nice muscles and poses. Traditionally, I think you just have to plan out like where you're going to focus your attention and the detail and stuff like that. The other, the other suggestion is just making the trees in the background more outlines instead of having all the bark, instead of having all the bark lines and trying to get all that detail into there because the more detail you have, the more your eye is going to be drawn to it and it's going to pull away from your foreground characters. So um, unfortunately, I mean, it would mean probably redoing this, but it's not a bad thing to, to take another pass at it. Great job, though. Keep it up. So this is his Instagram. You guys can see a bunch more of his stuff. Nice uh, cross-hatching. Keep practicing that cross-hatching. Here is something by Finny. Finny Q. This is really beautiful. Really cute. I'd just say push in some, like, cool colors. You have all warm. Everything's warm here. Maybe 10% of this drawing you could hit with some, some cool colors. And in the shadows, like maybe under her shirt, under her thing, maybe the shadows on her hair. You know, little 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 places, and I think that would really plus it. But you're already doing a great job, beautiful style. Thanks for reading all my books, buddy. I really appreciate it. I'm glad Unnatural Talent helped as well. So Steve has been working on this for 30 plus years now. Woo! 46, I'm going to be 46 this year, and I told myself, enough is enough. Get it done. That's awesome, man. Let's check out some pages. Oh, this is nice and big. That's a lot of work. A lot of detail. That's some really detailed work. It looks like you have like 3D models and you're, you're kind of rendering with, with 3D models. Is that right? Really interesting style. These, some of these lines are so thin. I wonder if it's going to, this stuff is going to get lost when it's printed or if it is going to be printed. You might want to do some printings to just see how much of this stuff holds up. This is really neat though. Um, keep going. Yeah. Thanks for showing, man. Join the 40 Club. <laughs> I joined the 40 Club three years ago. 40s is the new 20s. <laughs> Bear Seuss versus Medusa. That's cool. I, love, I like the decision to make her red and him more greenish warms. I've inspired you to pick up your pencil again after 10 years. <gasps> oh. Appreciate that, man. And don't just wait for a contest or like some outside motivator to, to inspire you next time. Just jump on it, man. Jump on it. Don't wait 10 years. But thanks for showing. Sword Guy Figure Drawing by Michael Munster 90. Let's see. This looks good. I like the muscles. I like the pose and the twisting. That's good. Some good study of anatomy and good hands holding the swords. It looks believable. This is really cool. The only the weakest link to me is the shoes, the boots, and the feet. They just they just don't look right, you know? I can tell what you're doing with them, but but that's the weakest link. Everything else looks really strong and fun. Approved. Flash Gordon meets Buck Rogers meets Davy Crockett. 1836, the Alamo. Davy Crockett makes his final stand when suddenly a strange beam of energy pulls him into outer space. <laughs> that is an intro, man. <laughs> I love how crazy that is. Three, two, one. Excellent. The time machine worked. How dare these fools on the council call me mad? I'm a genius. Gah! What in the Sam Hill just happened? If you're as smart as you think you are, then you'd best answer me. Of course, however, we don't have much time. Dun, Meanwhile, dun, above the dun, earth, dun, Commander, dun, unknown energy dun, detected dun, in Sector X-97. Dispatch a search dun, party dun, to investigate. Dun, 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 yes, Commander. Dun, dun, On the way, sir. Dun, dun. <laughs> to be continued. <laughs> cool. Some samurai art I did a month ago. That is cool. Is it digital or is it traditional? I think it's digital. But it, regardless, uh, looks really good. Keep it up. Let's see what your comics look like. Makes it really easy to read it on a computer the way you've set this up. I think I remember seeing this a while ago. I think you sent me a link to this, right? Anyway, looks really good. 
Um, if you guys want to read that comic, definitely check it out. I like this here. This definitely looks okay. Is it digital or is it traditional? I think this is traditional. I can see the, the pencil lines look pencil and it's a beautifully done really well, really nice control of the inking, really nice facial structure and really cool hand and poses. Oh, this is really good. San Legarto, number one. The prisoners are trying to escape. Stop them. Man, I really like the use of blacks. Charles Kelly is a.k.a. Chick. There's some really good art in here, man. Go check it out. This is beautiful work. Beautiful work. Thanks for posting it. The drawing of the thing I did in Clip Studio Paint. You can find me on Instagram at sketchworks underscore Ray. Good job, man. Looks great. I'd say work on these muscles a little bit. Kind of refine them. You got to have those muscles figured out underneath all that detail. Good job, though. Ooh. I like the color palette. You guys probably know me by now. I really like simple color palettes, almost like two-tone. Like there's the reds here, and then there's the, the greens, and it's a combination of the two. Oh, duh. This is Unleashing Havoc. Yes. Unleashing Havoc is helping me. Nick Welch. That's really cool, Nick. I, I thought I looked familiar. I must have seen it on your Instagram or something. Really good stuff. You guys follow Nick Welch. He's a good guy. Tommy Minzy. Looks really good. Looks very, very detailed, very realistic. I like all the textures you have incorporated into it. Well done. I think my only suggestion would be careful with some of the Photoshoppy looking things that you use. Looks amazing. Good job. Redraw. Oh, we're doing this. Hello, I recently redrew a dead girl I, I did back in 2017. So that's the before. And this is the after. Much better. You, you're a lot more confident in your lines. And your coloring is is definitely um, improved. Your light sources and stuff. This was kind of just like a guess, the light source. The eyes look more glowy. Very cool. Let's look at your comic real quick. Dead and the others. Thanks for showing me. Thanks for showing me this. Thanks for the link. Let's give you a thumbs up. Uh, drawing challenge. Progress. I forget the hashtag, the Janu draw creaturary. And you are you are the creature designer, man. That is cool. Good stuff. Okay, you guys can see more of these at uh, his Instagram at Ethan the Board and then EthanTheBoard.com. Look at that. This is definitely traditional, huh? Nice pencil drawing. Nice light, soft edges and rounded folds and stuff. Very cool. I like it hauntingly real in some strange ways. I think my the only thing that stands out to me is this hand. It doesn't feel like it's holding on to the staff, onto the thing very much. And this arm kind of looks kind of awkwardly bent. But this is really neat. Keep going, man. Love it. Nine, fish town. Ooh. Is this done on Procreate? That's my guess. That's neat. It's like an island, a fish island. And it kind of looks like it's in the air. It kind of looks like it's an island from overhead. You can kind of see the city, but it looks like fins. How clever. Art Joey Wall on Instagram. And on Twitter, you can even find a piece I dedicated to Jason around Christmas time. I think I remember that. All right, Joey the Wall. You got some nice paintings, man. That is cool. Oh, there it is. Yes, I remember this. On the 11th day of Christmas, my true love gave to me Jason Brubaker. So cool. Thanks for doing that, Joey. Here's one that has nine. Let's give it ten. Recently did a story at Instagram, Peanut Butterface. The creature emerged from the lake. That's cool. How creepy and interesting. Is that a brand? Oh, that's the mountain. You might want to just slightly make that a slightly darker color or a slightly lighter color above and below this line so it doesn't just look like a branch. My only suggestion. Other than that, you win first prize. Still a long way to go. Posted by Adbaya. So this is 2013, 2015, 2018. 
Nice. Yeah, there's some confidence growing in those lines for sure. Thanks for showing me. Bunny Avatar. Hey, Jason, my name is Carl. I was given a bunny avatar. I wanted to do, do something different with it. That's a nice little avatar. Nice little creepy bunny. I like it. Well done. I like the little red line around it. Red glowing eyes, red line. Nice shape. Thumbs up. Okay, we're going to stop here. Uh, this is the last piece. Aculoid piece. Is that it? A cold piece. Can't speak. Well, thanks, you guys, for posting. This has been really fun to check out all your art. This looks really cool. Um, is this digital or is this traditional? I think this is traditional. That's my guess. Should I actually start a different one and call, just call it Brew Crew instead of Brew Baker Submissions? I, I really like making it difficult so that as soon as you guys join something, I, I shut it down and make something else so that you have to join that instead. And that way it, it weeds out all the people who aren't really serious about it. <laughs> anyway, um, I appreciate you guys. See you next time. All right. Welcome to the Brew Crew. Hey, you guys want to see my new uh, setup? I got a, probably a $300 camera stand. Here, let me just show it to you real quick. Right here. It's these books. Yeah. And this here, you see, that's a little tiny tape on mirror. That way I can kind of see. And then I have this little tripod that I bought for $9. Yeah. $300. Anyway, I'm wasting a lot of time. Let's put this back so I can... Uh, this is from Amdraw four days ago. No, it's not four days. It's Amdraw, and it was done for four days ago. I am part of a comic collective group, and I recently finished this one-page comic. I, I tried a new ink and wash technique for this one. Let's check it out. Look at that. That is beautiful. I love it. Look at the character designs on those bird men and dog people. It's like Black Sad. Have you guys ever seen Black Sad? And look at the big old feather hands, wing hands. Oh, I love it. I love the backgrounds, how it's kind of like faded. The, there's not any like real hard lines. It's like wash. This is beautiful. And there's the reflection and it's broken in the glass, but you see all the broken lines. Wow, this is really good. I love it. The end. I wish there was more. I'd buy a whole book like this. That is amazing, amazing art. Um, yes, please more. <laughs> uh, really good stuff. Hi everyone, I just found the subreddit through the YouTube channel. I did the art for a one-page comic here. It's a departure from my usual style, usual style, but I was excited to try out a new technique using ink washes. Comic was done for a comic jam, a collaboration group where artists, writers, colors, and letters come together to produce weekly one page comics what a cool idea um i guess this is the link though right here to see the comic collective anyway i'm impressed man that is really that's beautiful man woman i don't know what is your name amazing 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 am draw doing a good job here's another one after a year of hiatus this is from alien fish z after a year of hiatus, I got my creative mojo back. Funny how life can interfere with your creativity. I love to get feedback on this. It's the first page of my new webcomic called Of Mice and Magic. I'll be starting on Webtoons or Topastic starting in February. Thanks, Bill. All right, Bill. Let's check it out. Ooh, man, that's some detailed line work. The only thing I would suggest if you want feedback would be Maybe loosen up some of the, the folds here so that it doesn't quite look so restrictive. Maybe study study folding, how clothes fold over bodies. That would really plus this, I think, and plus all your characters. But the, the little mice faces and everything look, look great. And the detail here in these rocks, whatever these things are, look great. Very cool. I'm down. I will, I will see more if you got more. Shadow Puppets. A drawing game. I like to play a drawing game with my friends. It's really been good practice over the years. Uh, you just draw what you see in the thumbnail. If you're interested, you can see a lot more of, of me and my friends work here. Shadow puppets. That's an awesome idea. <laughs> so this is the thumbnail that you saw and this is what you drew. That's cool. Let's see some more. So, oh, here's the thumbnail. So it's a group of you guys, huh? Doug, Doug, Craig. 
Craig, Doug, Doug, Craig. That's a cool idea. Very cool. Good stuff, man. So Koopa Comics. If you want other people to join you, do they uh, just reach out to you through your blog and say, can I do this too? Uh, because I think that's a cool exercise that maybe a lot of other people can do. So um, I'll just leave it up to you to uh, figure that out. So sorry about this. I posted this. This is my this is my editing attempt, you guys. I um, I saw this interview and there were some, so many moments where I was like, wow, someone could totally take that out of context and just like... Put it online and say that the opposite was said and um so over the weekend i was just like well, let's just see if i can do that and let's <laughs> so I, I i did it if you guys want to see it you can but it's just it's 30 seconds and it's totally taken the conversation out of context and it totally got the reaction that i assumed it would which is people misunderstanding it so i apologize i can have fun too though right Oh, let me show you this. Okay, uh, I put this here because I really wanted you guys to see it. So this was by, this wasn't posted on the on the subreddit forum, but I really like it. It was by the CM button and he drew a picture of me. Look, there's the filing cabinets right there. Oh, you totally can't see them. And there's my bookshelf and there's, you know, the door and the Ninja Turtles and a little seat and me with a sport and a beard. This must have been the day that I wore that one shirt. That's amazing. Anyway, I just think it's cool. Thank you, CM Button. I just want to show show it off to the rest of the world. By J J Hi Messy. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I'm working on a puppet show. Hopefully the storyboard will be finished soon. This is just a little cover art for the project. It's called Dragonfire. This reminds me of um on Kung Fu Panda 2. I had to draw this scene where these wolves were attacking and the background was all red and the wolves were black. It was the shadow puppet moment. And um, they were attacking Poe's parents. But it, it reminds me totally of this. And it was a real strong composition that I was directed to do. And so this, I feel like, has a real strong composition too. Um, and I love how it's all grayed out. Except for the eyes are glowing. It's really neat for like getting you to see those, those details. It really leads your eye around. And then there's the yellow glows from her hands. Really cool. That paper texture is really heavy and interesting now was i'm curious if this was done on paper my guess is that it's a digital am i right just be, the reason i say that is because the paper texture here is so like so like intense like these these little dotted creases in the paper that whatever it is the paper weave or whatever but then you see you don't see it as at all in some of these other places. This is a game I like playing is, can I tell if this is digital or traditional? And it's a game I really enjoy. Um, very good though. Uh, thanks for posting this. Let's go on to the next one. Pilot. Posted by Jack HD 99 I like the color palette. I like the, um, glass. the pilot glasses are the only thing that's blue. It's cool and a little, and some white there, which makes the words in the glasses pop. I like the style, the, it's really simple and really digital, but it looks really, it's a really neat, loose style. I like how the jaw's all like big and strong and that's cool. I love it, man. Good job. Over the Edge, No Hero Comics. Let's see what this is about. Hello, Jason. Hello, Brew Crew. Been watching and learning from Jason his live streams for years now. Uh, more or less since start of Sifra. He, he's really inspired me to put my head in the grindstone and develop skills and style. I want to share with you the first of my stories in actual comic illustration. I've been a web designer, game designer for nearly 10 years now. Um, I present Over the Edge. Feel free to read the first 10 pages on my site here. Thank you for posting a link. Input and constructive criticism invited. First bit of criticism, advice, would be the logo is really complicated and really hard to read. I, I know it's supposed to say Over the edge <laughs> because I read it in text but um, this and then it has all this stuff in it and then this stuff in it and then this other stuff in it and then layers and layers and colors this doesn't feel like it's part of this it feels like something separate I would suggest refining that logo making it a lot more clear figure out some, if you can figure out a logo that that you um, only use black only use black ink 
and then you can add colors to it later and in different situations like this. But if you can boil it down to a black silhouette type of logo, then I think you're, you're going the right direction. If you have all this complexity in it, people aren't going to be able to remember it very well. It's just, it's, and it's too much to, to get a quick read. There's no quick read there, you know? So that'd be my suggestion. Characters look great. I think this is cool. Um, and then the next page. It's neat. I like the contrast of the colors, the oranges and then the, the reds. I think that's good. It called itself the Demon Miracle. You like my wording? I could be the voiceover talent for you. Cool, man. Keep it up. If anyone wants to go see it, um, follow this link. NoHeroComics.com Shirt design feedback, please. Standing like a lemon. AJ Zulu. Patreon, I'm going to follow you back. Um, what does standing like a lemon mean? So standing like a lemon means you're standing around and doing nothing when you ought to be a little more active. Okay, let's look at this. <laughs> I, get, I can see that. Yeah, he's standing like a lemon. Look at those eyes. What is going on with those eyes? There are creepy pupils going on right there. And is this ear hair? Is there hair on his ears? Um, <laughs> yeah. I think yeah, he looks like he's standing like a lemon. Uh, this H looks, it's because there's this drop shadow on it and it's like painted like it's bulging. It really like looks like it's not part of his shirt. So if you want it to look like it's on his shirt, I would just flatten it out a little bit. So it's not quite that. I mean, there's so much more emphasis on this H being rounded than anything else in the picture. So it kind of pops out. That's my suggestion. And then what we got here is going to go on a shirt like that. <laughs> okay. And then here's some designs. This face looks kind of mean. Arr. He's standing like a lemon who's making it happen. I don't know what, what that means. This guy is a lemon. <laughs> why, why does he look mad? Wait, there's, there's so many depth, so many layers of depth going on in this one. He has a t-shirt that has like a, is this like a um, Thundercats? I could be totally wrong. Shows how much I know. And then he's holding the lemon. And he's like really excited about it. And he has a, I love lemons. <laughs> Very cool. Um, those are, it's cool to see your uh, concept designs, your little sketches, and then also the mostly finished product. That's great. Anyway, moving on. Ooh. Character concept work, a couple character concept designs for my creator own comic, The Brood. That's neat. I like the suit. It's very nice. I like it. Is it digital or is it traditional? This right here, okay, let me tell you. This right here makes me think it's it's digital. That and that and that. This low, this, this. Uh, what is it? The letter M? <laughs> Signature. <laughs> the gun looks digital for sure. And so that clues me in that the rest must be digital. This looks digital just because of the line work. I could be wrong, but I'm not looking up close. Let's, let's see if we can guess this one. It's either traditional or it's like on one of those, like an iPad where it gives you these soft pencil -y looking lines. I'd say it's digital because of these, these, back, these background lines look kind of a little bit too faded to be done with a pencil. Okay, I just made up a new game. Is it digital or is it traditional? Well, thanks guys for posting your stuff. Um, this is like the third video or keep posting stuff. I'll keep reviewing it and keep putting it on YouTube. All right, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. So welcome you guys. This is the Brew Crew Art Review. Um, I had an idea actually when I was working on this today. Maybe it's this person who gave me the idea. So it's a simple post that says power of repetition, right? And then you go here and it's like, what is this? Oh, it's an Instagram post. Maybe this is a good example of that. Let's look at the very first art that this girl has done, which you see a lot of these, these little furry characters. It's, you know, which it looks pretty good. April 19th, 2014, almost five, five years ago. So five years ago, this was how, what her art looked like. And let's fast forward to today. Quite the improvement. And that's just because this person is drawing every day. Lots of practice. 
That's a huge improvement over those first ones. So thanks for showing me this, Dhamma Chan, um, living in Los Angeles. You guys uh, check her out, follow follow her stuff if you like this stuff. That would be cool. If you guys have any suggestions of artists that you that where you can see a thread from start to finish, that would be really fun to review that stuff because that gets me excited when I see the progress of people. All right, let's just look through these ones that um, I haven't checked marked yet. One hour of study, trying to do a, this quick study and trying to focus on story. So a lot of work ahead for me. Charles Banzai. Sorry, Charles. I don't know how to pronounce your name. I like the color theory here. It's a big image. This is beautiful color theory, though, I think. like I like this the grays and blues and then this like little uh, transition color of the purple and then the solid blacks. A lot of times in um, art, people are like, don't use solid blacks. That's a bad thing. And I'm like, no, it's good. Black is black is it's as good as any other color. Sometimes things need to be black, you know. Looks great, though. Very good. Thank you for submitting that. <laughs> I guess so. Oh, yeah, I showed this the other week. The CM button. He posted this on Instagram, and I found it, and I already showed it. But we'll show it again because I like it. And he showed us, he gave us a really big, really big version of it. Does that look like me? Thanks, CM button. I love it. Very nice. It looks good. All right, the only thing I would suggest on this would be it feels kind of unnatural having this thin layer of grass here. I know they're, step they're stepping to a cliff unless it's a cutaway of the ground. But then you have these pieces of grass coming out like this. Um, and they don't really fit in with this. I think one of the ways, ways you can get around that is trying to, to blend these, these grass, these little pieces of grass in a little bit better to the grass that's sticking out. Maybe having some coming over over his foot and just trying to bring that all together and make it feel like it's part of the same, same plane, you know, maybe throw some, throw some pieces that are coming down here. If it's a cliff, otherwise it might look like a cutaway, like have some shorter ones in here too. So it kind of has some variation. And I think that would really help. Um, the only th other thing that's kind of strange is, um, you have this leg here, but then this leg is kind of hidden. I can tell it's supposed to be there, unless it's a three-legged animal. But, you know, you could probably get away with just kind of putting this leg down here like this, you know? And it kind of helps. And I think I would actually push a little bit more of this grass, you know, in between things. So anyway, those are thoughts. There's not one right way or wrong way to do this stuff. But um, those are things I'd suggest. I think the characters um, look pretty good. There's some nice expressions in them, the nice nice shapes. You could probably work with the, the structure a little bit more on this. But there you go. If you want to critique, it looks like Disney in that right now. Oh, boy. We're promoting Disney. I'm going to get copy striked on this video. Let's quick get off this. Great start, though. I would be curious to see a, a, another another pass at this, like tweaking some of that stuff. But it's totally up to you guys. Totally up to you. T B A T B W A. I don't know how to pronounce that. So thank you for posting this. Let's go on to the next one. This one's by Electro Magnus Two, a personal comic page using Brubaker's awesome YouTube tutorials. Oh, how cool! Wow, this is really nice. I like the lighting. I like the colors. The 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 purples. Warm colors in the shadows, not warm. The purple cool colors in the shadows and the warm colors where the light is hitting. I like the, the line work and the detail. And you got this character. I love the character's face too. Really cool concept design, character design coming into this building. He's like, huh! and then he sees this dead person and then this owl or something. Is it a stat statue of an owl? It must be. I don't know. I don't know. I see statues here. I mean, the foreground character is really nice and pops out because there's more colors hitting this guy and more different kinds of colors, like the warm scarf and stuff versus the cools of back here. Really neat. 
This is great. My goodness. I love it. I could stare at this kind of art a long time. And I'm uh, happy that my YouTube tutorials helped you in some way. Thank you for posting this, Electro Magnus. Let's see what you have to say. Two year, years ago, I had no idea how to use Photoshop. I, I struggled learning, learning the tools. However, with your incredibly easy to learn process videos on coloring and flatting, I ended up getting so much better. That's great. Here is one of more recent pieces, which I'm hoping to publish at some point at my lo local Comic-Con. Still struggling with working out the lettering, but I feel like I finally found the style I enjoy. You know, if there's any critiques I would have, it would be um, maybe isolate the foreground a little bit more. You have them popping out right here compared to the background. If you, if you isolated a little bit more light on him so that he pops a little bit more, I'm not quite sure where his body ends. Like, I'm not quite sure if this is the shape of his body or if it's this. That's totally secondary. But I think actually another way to solve that problem would be is if you kept this all darks or, or like this color, the colors that you have here in the shadows, keep this all shadowed. Don't put any of that warms into that or at least not much. And then if he stays warm, it will pop him out a little bit more. I don't even know if it would be a, um, a flaw, but there's so much detail. It makes you struggle with where to look. But that might not be a bad thing because sometimes you want people to stare at everything. Like these panels here, these panels here are very clear with what you're looking at. Not maybe not what you're looking at, but they're clear with what to look at. You know, you see this guy, you, it leads you in here, and then you see these two. These two panels right here um, made me second guess. I feel like they're a little too similar. You might you might want to move the owl on this side, maybe. I don't know, just to break it up a little bit. If I if I wanted to be really critical, I you know I'm, I can be super critical if you want, but I don't think it deserves that because I think you're doing a really great job. But there's just so much detail, which is great. So I guess the trick is to to figure out how to control people's eyes with that detail. If you want to have that much detail in it, which I'm not against it at all. I love detail. Like a lot of the stuff up here gets lost. And so maybe it feels like it's kind of flat. So using the color to like pop things forward and background, kind of like you did with these trees to separate the chunks of detail would be helpful. You did it a little bit with this guy, the, the colors, the bright colors on this guy here. It separates them just a little bit from this, but there's still so much bright color in that same range right here that it kind of merges it back together. So those are my critiques, but I don't think, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't pause what you're doing to go back and fix anything because this is already strong. This is already really beautiful. So going, going forward, if you think about those things, I think you're going to be on to something good. Character turn of Ricky, the main character from my comic Ultimate Theater by Kappa Comics. That is awesome. Please let me scrub through this. I want to see one panel at a time. It's just going so fast. It looks great though. I really like it. It's just so fast I can't I can't focus on any of the detail. That's why I want to scrub through it. Doing character turnarounds is really important, I think. If you're especially if you're doing a comic on your own. And this is a brilliant way to do it. I've never seen anybody do this before. Actually, animate them spinning in space. You've nailed all the proportions of things and it really feels like it's turning around in 3D space. So yeah, you know, man, that's good. Great job. So we got a picture from Arno. Uh, he's one of my buddies. This is a this is one of the set location designs for the apocalyptic conspiracy graphic novel. And it's the horse from uh, from the Denver airport, it looks like, which is so creepy. I mean, maybe it's the horse from the Denver airport. <laughs> it sure looks like it, but uh, it looks apocalyptic. That's great. I like the really dark colors, um, the dark warms in the background and the dark cools on the character. The only thing I... It, it might be getting a little lost 
I'm trying to figure out if there's something I missed that I'm supposed to be seeing. You could almost continue this here red a little bit more in the fog or mist behind him just so that these other parts of the horse pop out a little bit more. So it looks really great here mixed with this and then the red little rim glow on it. Yeah, maybe just continuing that, expanding that red out here just a little bit and just hit it as if it's a little foggy. That would be my suggestion. Good job, though. I love it. Okay, let me try this again because it crashed on me last time. That looks really nice. Nice color use, nice separation of her colors or his and these guys' colors, and the purples. Nice use of the font. You don't know what it says. And the round, yeah. Really cool. I like that a lot. Really cool. I love it. Got to give the audience links, Kyle. Otherwise, they will not know. They don't know. They don't know what I know. They don't know you from CGMA. So, <laughs> so they don't know that you're Kyle and that you have a cool style. You guys, if you're going to post in here, I'm all for you guys promoting your stuff. So, so send, so put links in here so people can find you if they, if they want to see it. If they see it in the video and they want to find you, um, make sure you have links so that they can, um, they can, find you. Got it? I guess that's it. Well, all right. See you guys next time. Testing. Is this microphone working? I'm just checking it out to see if it's working. If it's not working, you guys won't hear this. Okay. Welcome to Brew Crew, everybody. I'm going to go through these things in Brew Crew, and I'm going to go sort it by, by top. So the most popular, most voted up ones. Let's get started. Ooh. Look at that. That's nice. Beautiful colors. Poster I made for my D&D &D party. That is amazing. Can I zoom? I can really, really zoom. I wish I could halfway zoom. <laughs> Dang it. Anyway, looks drawn in the computer, which is great. <laughs> Holy characters. I wish I could see it at a reasonable size, not too small or too big. Um, beautiful colors. Man, I am I'm impressed. A lot of characters in there for your D&D &D party. Man, that's quite the work for a poster for a group of friends. Um, your friends got to love that. I'm impressed. I want to be in your D&D &D party now. Approve! Okay, I tried a more animated style from... I don't... Sorry, I don't watch any of the new Star Wars. <laughs> uh, Ahsoka from Star Wars. The clones... Wars TV show. That looks good. I think it's a good pose too. Lightsabers. Look at that. Uh, your name is, it's actually like designed with the same color palettes and everything. That looks great. I don't know if it's just the angle of the camera that you took a picture, but the head looks a little wobbly. Like it looks a little like, like that in its shape. But I don't know if that's just the camera or not. But um, what can I tell you? I think you did a great job by the Art Jedi. Is this the same person? Yep. The Art Jedi, making it happen on Brew Crew. Another Kylo Ren. Looks great. Really neat. Look at that, 12 upvotes. This looks a little crooked. It looks like his lightsaber's like going, right? Okay, so we are. I already went through these. Experimenting with some new coloring techniques and toying around with the Star Trek fan fiction idea. Some good coloring, I think. The little white line around it. Um, I don't know if I would choose that, but it doesn't, it doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. It's just, uh, it, it kind of puts it in, it makes it look like a sticker or something, you know, or more like graphic design, which um, isn't a bad thing. But mixed with your shading, your pencil techniques and the shading and stuff, I would suggest maybe not doing it. But, I, you know, when it's on a dark background, it's nice to have that white line around there to kind of separate out the line from the background. Um, so that you preserve that line work. So I can see why you would do it. And then this just feels stamped on this, the, the Star Trek logo, but not a, again, not a big deal. But I always like to see things within the same kind of style. So if his face is drawn with pencil, then it'd be nice if that's drawn with pencil. Otherwise, it just looks like it's kind of like, it looks like you cheated, which maybe did. And there's nothing wrong with cheating. I cheat all the time. Not at school though, kids. Oh, this is from uh, The Never Ending Story. I just watched this scene with my son, like, not too long ago. Interesting. That's funny. The only scene I saw when I was when he was watching it. That's such a weird technique. It, it almost looks like 
um, you're looking through a glass and then the water's running down the glass. What a strange technique. Is that just a, like a Photoshop filter you put on it? Or is that how you painted it? Very interesting. Looks neat. I like it. Ooh. The Mandalorian colored. That's nice. I'm going to see this up close. There's something that's bothering me. Okay, you want to see what's bothering me? I don't know if these little jagged lines are artifacts accidentally put there or if that's intentional. It looks like it, an accident, like like the, the file that this font was created with was just enlarged and it pixelated those straight lines. That's the thing that stands out the most to me. I think everything else you have looks great. The textures are neat. These effects are beautiful. Like especially this one with a little grittiness in it. The the clouds, the textures back here. I think the line work is, is pretty good. Um, I like how you grittied up the line work with to, to work with the color. I think the um, color palettes are nice. I think the logo itself is works nice with the colors. It's just that um, the, the lines, you know, you might have to go in there and actually create those lines. And if you're grit, if, if this is intentional, then I think it needs to be done on all the other lines too. So there's these that are really straight and precise. And then these are that are all jagged and crookedy. Everything that's going at an angle. So I'm assuming it's just a, a accident. Anyway, great job. Approved. Thumbs up. Muscle anatomy study just trying to hone my skills at drawing super he heroic human anatomy. That's amazing. That looks really good. Wow. Yeah. I think you got it. <laughs> you can really feel the weight and you can really feel the shapes and the, you know, the form. That's really hard to do. Yeah, I think you're doing a great job. Good night. Good night. One of my friends used to always say, good night. <laughs> and so I caught on to it. And now I always say, good night. Anyway, uh, that looks really good. Really well done. In the Rosario, good job. All right. Tired Teller says, a character for a book I'm writing. Drawing helps me visualize my thoughts. You should draw it too. You should cool stuff in here. I really like the pants and how the, you can just feel the folds in it. The hand pose. It's great. Good stuff. Four girls. A 26-page Harry Potter fan comic. Oh, neat. Do we get to see it? Do we get to see the four girls? I didn't know you could do fan fiction on webtoons. That's cool. I guess I guess that as long as they're not um as long as they're not uh you're not paid by webtoons, I I, I guess it doesn't matter. Oh, I remember seeing this. So that was a Harry Potter thing. It reminded me of Harry Potter. I assumed it wasn't, but I guess it is. Wow, how did how lucky of me to pick the one page that had the image that you've already posted. This is great. Good old Hagrid. Awesome. Cool. That's neat. If you guys want to see four girls fan fiction about Harry Potter, check it out. It looks good. Well done. Kylo Ren. Ray versus Kylo colored version. <laughs> Join the dark side. No, I love you. I love you too. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I don't know if that's, is that how the story goes? Something like that. I remember there was some, there were some interesting moments between them that uh, I enjoyed in that last film. The blurry water is, is interesting. I don't know if I, if it's throwing me off more than it's helping. It looks kind of photoshoppy, I guess is, it's starting to look kind of photoshoppy. I would almost use paint splatters and stuff to represent that and not blur it. But it doesn't mean that's a bad approach. There's a lot of, eh, I'd be, I'd be careful. <laughs> it, it, in my opinion, it looks more amateur when you, when you use blur and motion blur indiscriminately, but there are ways to do it that work really well. Um, I just think this combination you, since you're doing a lot of textures and, and hand painted stuff, I would assume just like get a cool paint, these paint textures and use those 
and have the motion within the paint texture instead of motion blurring the paint texture or motion blurring whatever this is. Um, that would be my suggestion, but I think the colors are strong and I think, I think it's, I think it's good. You know, um, that's just one thing that kind of caught my eye. So, uh, just, just something to be aware of. Oh, and here's the inks. That one we just watched, looked at looks good. And here's the pencils for it. Looks good. Just updated my webtoon, a smiley face. Check it out. I would love some feedback. Link in comments. Shotgun Samurai. Whoa, look at that. You did a kind of like a one picture that, that goes together for the updates. Neato. Let's see this newest one. No, brother. You are not responsible for the monstrosity of others. The true monster lies before us. A disgraceful man as he deserves no absolution. Follow my lead. I have a plan to stop him once and for all. Those guys, I made him sound both the same. Tring! Look at that nice light gleam. What is going on here? So someone's running away. He's running and someone's dead. So what's this? Bling! Another nice gleam. You are trying to push forward. Ooh, someone has him in his crosshairs. There's a bullet. Ooh, look at that. Something's going on there. What was that? I'm not sure. <laughs> it moved. Dun, dun, dun. Huh? The booger cracked my arm. The booger. Yeah, that's right. The booger. Okay. Good stuff. Some neat stuff. So I see you did it as a, a comic first, and then you updated it, converted it to webtoons, which looks good. Looks very good. Thanks for posting monkey madness. Donkey madness. <laughs> a piece I did for DC's fan appreciation episode on DC Daily. Wow, that's really nice. Nice, like, lighting and reflections. That really looks like a leather because of the lighting. It's great. John Gum. That is cool. This may be my best art yet. Super excited to color it. Oh, yeah, there we go. Wow, that pencil. The pencils look great. It's interesting that you did the water textures instead of following through with your pencil lines. Excuse me. Swallowing like Bob Ross. He... I remember he used to always swallow a lot in his commentary. I'm just going to paint this happy little... Can you hear that? Okay. Sorry. That just turned gross. Um, good stuff. Heroic shenanigans. Hey, Brook, who just joined Reddit today so I could post here? Oh, sorry, and I don't really do it very often. Apologize for dragging you over to Reddit. I've been working on my comic, my webcomic heroic shenanigans since 2015 and I kickstarted the first volume last year. It's an all ages comic about superhero or summer camp and I've learned so much about making comics while creating it. This is the most recent chapter for the comic and I'd like to see what people think of it. Chapter 6. Closure. If you'd like to see it, it's there. I also post on Webtoons and Tapas and my Instagram is there. Yes, the old school website. That's right. I think it looks good. Looks nice, nice and polished. A lot of, um, a lot of, um, I don't even know what I was going to say. I was, I had a train of thought and then I lost it. Looks great. Um, well, good. I'm, congratulations on kickstarting it. If you guys want to check out Heroic Shenanigans, go to the links. I think it looks really good. Inktober Dragons. Oh, yeah, that's right. Inktober. It's October 8th right now. Let's check out day one of Inktober. X Mamie Ox. I like that red texture you got. Was that? Did I miss something? Was that a sponge? No, it started out with that. Let's fast forward a little bit. See what it ends up looking like. Yeah, yeah. All kinds of markers. Inktober all the way. Very nice. There we go. It's interesting. So you started with the texture. Approve. Uh, okay. I made a baby. The species is blind and likes to eat fruit and fish. Love. I made a baby? I don't understand. That looks like a beautiful baby. I love the beautiful horns and the beautiful creepy smile. What a baby. <laughs> That's cool though. Good drawing. <laughs> couple of projects I finished. Nice. 
Uh, hello, Brew Crew. I posted a few times on the other subreddit for Brew Bigger Submissions. Got a couple projects I finished. Reason that I like to share. Bling! I continued practice of getting better at background environment art. Yeah, it looks good. You know what I would want to suggest? I'd suggest looking at depth queuing. I don't know if that's the right word for it. I know that some video games talk about it in that way, where you actually... Um, you you do things to cue the depth, right? Depth cueing. So it's like as things go back, they either push towards a, a bluish color because they're so they're like all this light from the, the sky, which is blue, is coming down, and it would kind of start like soaking into all this. So you could push it blue. You could push this more white uh, sl slightly, like get rid of some of that saturation of the detail of the blacks. Um, you know, you, you kind of have the darkest point in the horizon on the water right at the very distance, but that would probably be uh, a lot, that would be a lot lighter. I mean, you can have that nice grad that you have coming up here, but, but it just, it, it doesn't feel like it's far, far, far away. It doesn't feel like that far horizon um, because of how dark that is. Does that make sense? It's like the darkness of this area is just as dark as this, you know, and, and this. And so it, it, it flattens it. It feels like it's on the same plane. And you can even do the same with this stuff. Like this foreground buildings can be more contrasty and have more darks than this set of buildings. You know, the if you make the dark slightly less dark, slightly less contrasty, it really starts feeling like it's going away. Oh, you did it a little bit here did it a little bit on these guys and see they those get really get pushed back they feel like they're kind of on this in the same plane as the water you know it feels like it's part of that whereas this feels more foreground you know so congratulations Ta -da. it's just the only problem is because you did it here why isn't this even more right like suddenly this this feels closer than this now, if you just look at it based on, on that. Okay? Makes sense? So, anyway, those are my suggestions for that. But I think it's looking good. Fan art of May from a game, Guilty Gear, in her new design for an upcoming 2020 installment. Cool. Looks great. Really nice line work. Nice coloring. Nice pose. You can see more of my stuff over at Twitter and Art Station. Cool. This is really neat. Neat stuff. Left V or Left TV. <laughs> okay. Test. I wanted to know if I could draw a page. And ta-da, you have drawn a page. A girl is sleeping. Crash! Something wakes her and she gets up. I would make her eyes maybe a little bit more awake. Like, <clears throat> right? If you want this crash to be like really startle her out of bed, but maybe she's just kind of like crash. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Um, one thing I will say is there's a little nice little tangent right there where the sheets and the window um, are touching. So I I, I'm, I, I should have said not nice tangent. I would either move this window line a little bit over so that it's not touching that line or something like that. Um, that's the only tangent I see that bothers me. Yeah. Good job with your first page, Blue Knight Fox. Good job. Samurai421 says, here's a page I've done. I'd love feedback from anyone. Or critique! Well, my first critique is, I don't know what all this stuff means up here, but it looks very nice. It looks like it's almost like you designed it for a phone. So I guess this was all done on on like your iPad or, or um, a phone thing, which is neat. It's neat that you can just have a nice little handheld device you can just draw on nowadays. Talk about convenient. So is this like a sketch or is this like a finished page? It looks like it looks like a, a layout. You know, like like you've thumbnailed it. Um, a little, a little bit beyond thumbnails because you've pushed some gray into it, but it looks, it doesn't look finished. So that's my question: Is, Are you intending this to be a finished page? Um, 
If so, I would plan on doing another pass over it and just trying to tighten up these things. You know, it really comes across in like where, where you're writing letters like like here, scratch, you know. Um, there's some parts that can totally be fine uh, being sketchy like like this area right here. That works great at like that because it looks like fur um, and these eyes, the red in there is nice. But then there's just a lot of stuff that just like really, really like, what is this? I, I, I'm having a little hard time understanding what I'm looking at. Um, so, you know, what is, is that, that something I should be interested in? I don't know. Is this a guy carrying a cart? Like I, you know, I, I'm just not sure what I'm looking at. So if it's a fin, if it's intended to be finished, then I think it's, it doesn't work. But if it's a nice sketch that you're intending to continue working on, this is the layout, then I think the layout works pretty good. Um, if we want to just talk about layout problems, um, this tree coming down and just touching against that border, I would I would make that tree go all the way past, you know, so that it doesn't just come up and touch it. Um, you might even want to make this this border little thicker. I don't know. You don't have to. That's nah. Don't worry about that one. Mainly is mainly that that tree edge. Um. So your your eye kind of like looks this way, and then it kind of gets led down to this. I think it's a good. I think it's a pretty good flow. It's just I don't know what I'm supposed to be looking at here. Is there something important that I'm supposed to be looking through other than the fact that this guy's walking in between some trees? So those are my thoughts, um, thinking out loud here. Hopefully they help getting some feedback of, you know. It's hard It's hard to know when you do this stuff to know how people are going to look at it and interpret it. Because if, if it's out of your mind, you have a real clear picture. And then you, the, the hard part is translating what's in your mind onto paper so that someone else can get the same vision in their mind. Right? So those are the hurdles we need to overcome together just figured i'd cross post here so it wouldn't get lost from about two months ago thank you sorry about uh, sorry about that that's cool really nice colors vibrant it's cool good textures colors approve let me just read it real quick haven't posted here in a while so here's an entry i did for the jim bob drawing show on instagram which i decided to double as a practice page for my on off picture book project. The theme for this past week was hyperactive rodent. It's definitely hyperactive. It reminds me of um Pikachu and that kind of that kind of stuff. Other than this character, of course. The kid character does not look like Pikachu. A poster I made for my artist re residency. <laughs> Can I read? <laughs> Art made possible. It's a neat poster. I think it's a nice design. Nice use of like the white lines instead of black lines. That seems like a hard thing to do. It's always hard for me to do that. Because it, when you invert the lines from black to white, it, it always seems to mess up what it feels like. So, not. I mean, maybe it felt completely different when you, the lines were black. But um, I like it. I like the colors. Like these, these floating objects are kind of just a nice light blue, and then you have some darker blue ones that he's actually touching. And the characters, same colors as these fonts here. Really nice. I think that looks really good. Well done. Good design. Uh-huh. That's something I don't think I'm very good at, is that kind of design work. Fonts and art and colors mixed together in a nice design package. Eh, it's difficult. I made one animation in one of my webcomic characters, of one of my webcomic characters. His name is Simi, or Semi. Look at that. I could do the voiceovers for you. Or, what? Or, <laughs> which one do you want? More feminine? <laughs> okay, enough. Okay, I get it. It's beautiful. That's great. You know, when you do the animation stuff like this, it really helps you, like, figure out your characters. So, I'm impressed. 
I, I mean, I think that's a good thing to do. Working off of one of Drawfee's videos. I don't know who Drawfee is. Uh, cute and horrifying. Horrifying to cute. A creepy cowboy worm. Whoa. That is creepy. Yes. Yeah, that's a creepy cowboy worm. Uh-huh. I can agree. Tired teller again. Good stuff. Okay, I'll do one more. Character design progression. First design to final. Instagram. Little witch Riri. Rini. Rini. It's a cool, cool drawing style. Eyes open, eyes closed. Sad. Happy. That's a neat drawing style. I is there more? Oh, there's more. I like I like the way you draw the eyes and the facial features. It feels like it's okay, yeah, I was wondering if it was the same character. I really like it. Yeah. That's really good. Thought it'd be fun to show off the style I started with and some of the designs I had before I settled on the final look. I was really inspired by Antonio Lopez's work. Very cool. Well, I really like your style. Yeah, I'm. what I'm curious to see now is how this will translate to, like, panels and pages. That's what I want to see now. See you guys next time. What up, everybody? Welcome to Brew Crew. I just wanted to show you, like, look, we're, we actually have a real Reddit Brew Crew this time. It's really called Brew Crew. Not the stupid brew baker submissions that everyone was doing, but stupid and all out of style and completely out of date. We're now in the Brew Crew. So let's all just pick it against Brew Baker submissions and head on over to Brew Crew and join that one from now on so that we can burn Brew Baker submissions to the ground. Okay, <laughs> let's get started. Look at that. Those are some nice sketches. Nice face sketches. I like this one right here especially. Was just drawing today and I thought I'd submit. Yeah, I like your drawings. Shows you've been putting in some time already. Keep going. I love it. I really like it. That stiff. Splash page on one of the comics done in Clip Studio. Wait, this is a splash page? How? Oh, wait, that's right. Splash page is this one. It's just a full page. And a double page spread is a double page spread. Spread. <laughs> I like it. There's a lot of cool, like, interesting stuff happening that makes me go, I want to I know more. What's going on here? Looks good. I really like the coloring, too. Art inspired by the webcomic Lore Olympus. Oh, there we go. Yeah. It's a very unique style, isn't it? Now, the thing you got to really get right is the shapes because it's all about the shapes. So I feel like this leg is a little like... It's, it's, it's close, but it stands out as kind of kind of difficult to, to believe. Actually, both of the legs kind of a little bit, but um, it's cool. It's good that you're trying out new styles. My first attempt at digital art, not that my traditional art is any better. Oh, it looks good. Yeah, see, this is the problem with digital art. It's like you start seeing the like blurry pixel edges and then other edges are really clean and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, it's just all settings, though. Just all in the settings. Looks good, though. I think your original art must be pretty good if, if your digital art looks like that. My Instagram images. Oh, cool. You just threw a bunch of them together in a picture. Those are some crazy character designs. Hey, Jason, I've been posting almost daily on Instagram for two months, but I haven't seen a meaningful following grow yet. My content has been many of these daft characters I am creating, but not sure if they are any good or good enough to generate a following. I know it takes a long time to get followers, but perhaps I should try something else. The idea is to generate a following that I can then point to my webcomic I'm currently making that I am going to finish before posting online, maybe sometime mid next year. My Instagram is blah, blah, blah. Any thoughts would be helpful, thanks. Let's go to your Instagram before we have any thoughts. We need some thoughts. Um, I I don't... I mean, I understand your, your reasoning for doing it, um, but I've honestly pulled away from Instagram because I don't see the point in it myself. I've pulled away from Twitter, and I've completely shut off uh, uh, Facebook. And Instagram I liked for a long time because it was a visual thing, but um, I don't, I mean, unless you really do this kind of uh, a real specific Instagram style art, it's not going to click with Instagram followers, I don't think. And I don't want to do that kind of art 
and I'm not really into I'm not really into trying to build an Instagram following that then I can try to convince one percent of them to go over and join my web comic. Instead, I just want to uh, build the thing that I want to build and get people to contribute and participate and and subscribe to that, you know. And so um, I've put in a lot of time to Instagram over the years, and I don't I don't see hardly any return on the investment. So so in this case, you know, the your characters that they're interesting, but but your art hasn't you haven't the the art isn't kind of at this uh, crazy level to where people are going to follow this just because of how amazing your art is. Your art is good and you have interesting characters, but it's kind of more like in the, you know, it's kind of more like in the South Park or Family Guy or Beavis and Butthead type style to where it's like, it's not supposed to be polished and instead it's it's the content that's driving the audience. You know what I'm saying? And so um, if Mike Judge were to post uh, stuff on Instagram, prior to being famous from Beavis and Butthead, he, <laughs> if Instagram was around back then, you know, it wouldn't, it probably wouldn't get that much attention. So I think you have a couple options. It's either develop your craft and your skill more to where your art can really um, pull people in just because it's, it's really amazing. Um and and right now I'm not saying it's amazing not amazing your characters are really interesting so you have that going for you and and yeah you could you know like kind of any style can go this these days um any style you know any any style you see out there could be turned into like a TV show practically um but but that doesn't mean that people will automatically connect to a style and that doesn't mean that, you know, if if you get someone with money and a network to, to back this, obviously it would get in front of a lot of people and it would grow a following. <clears throat> but how do you convince someone to do that? You, you know, that's a hard thing to do. So what you're trying to do is convince one person at a time to follow you. Um, and I'm just kind of randomly mumbling. I don't know if I'm making any sense. But um, I just don't. I don't think this is the way to to go. And I know that there's some cases where, you know, people have gotten a million subscribers on Instagram and then and then they can go and do something else. And, uh, you know, a thousand of those million people. So that's a really small percent. Again, a thousand of those million people come on over and follow them. And it looks like they did a big thing because a thousand people are buying their new product. But... Um, I'm not really presenting my my case very well here to you. And I don't really know what to say. Like there's like I think this is all great, but I I it's not it's not necessarily something I would follow on Instagram. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody can can post like little pictures of of random characters. Man, I'm I'm really sounding like a jerk. I don't want to sound like a jerk because I I like what you're doing and I I think I think what you're doing is you have the right mindset of like just producing content and making stuff and getting it out there. Um, the difference between where you're at and where I was back in the day when I was trying to grow a, a you know, j just start out is I didn't have internet. So I had to, I was forced to put in hours and hours and hours and even years of time to get my stuff to a really polished level before I could even have a chance at showing it to somebody. Um, and that's the thing that the internet and Instagram is is kind of ruining for people. It's making it so that um, you don't have to put in the, the time yet, you know, and you don't have to develop this, the craft quite as much. And, um, and because of that, you, there's a lot of competition that's all on the same level of, of, making stuff that hasn't been developed fully yet. The the hard pill to swallow for for what I would suggest is you know, spend spend a year or two really learning anatomy. Spend a year or two really learning 
to draw bird like realistic birds and then you can and then you can start drawing cartoony birds and break all the rules you know but it will just make your stuff look so ridiculously better if you put in that time um, and it should be time that you're not it's it's not really putting in time that you're trying to like show off online either it should be I, i'm a real, a real advocate now even more and more of like locking yourself in a room doing art that you're never going to show anybody like let's just start practicing that you know so those are my thoughts i really admire your uh, uh your go get it go i'm gonna make this happen attitude you know um i just think you gotta put in more time to really polish your art um so anyway that's what i think uh hopefully that's not discouraging hopefully that is encouraging and i really appreciate you showing me all this stuff though and i really do like the unique interesting uh qualities of, of your drawings and your characters it's very unique to you so that's good cross-posting this because I heard you made the community. Yay! You put it on Brew Crew. Woohoo! So uh, I talked about this one in the last video. Um, and um, yes. So thank you for posting it again here. Inks and letters. Oh, this is by Cord. Okay, some inks and letters from the pages of an ongoing comic project. Not sure if this will get colored yet. What do you guys think? The skins must continue to be passed down from generation to generation until the final battle. Whoa, that's a lot of detail. When the serpent was de is defeated and the world begins anew. And if the skins are lost, what will keep the light from the darkness? What will stop the deep from swallowing the world? Cap. Already the tides are rising. I make him sound so ominous. That's cool. I, I think the um the words and the font works really well with it. I think it goes well. It doesn't stand out as wrong to me in any way. It fits with your art style and everything. So, yeah, I think you're on the right path with that. Oh, colored the sky. The Rise of Skywalker Commission. I think this is one of my best pieces. That looks great. I like this green mixed with this and the foreground colors. Good work. I bet whoever commissioned you to do that is very pleased. Three chapters of my manga so far from Perry's Hotter. Transformer. Nice. Looks good. Looks good. If you guys like this, go check out Transformer by Perry's Hotter. My original character, Amrock, starring in a comic I'll start next year using the rest of this year to figure out the character's plot, creatures, etc. Dun, 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 I am going to defeat you! Okay. This is great. I think, um, definitely work on anatomy and proportions and, like, flip your, like, when you're drawing, flip it. If you're drawing it on paper, hold it up to a light, flip it, backwards and hold it up to a light and you'll see like how um skewed things get like the eyes and facial features that you can you can really see it if you do a mirror image if you're doing it on a computer just do that with either photoshop do the mirror image or clip studio there's a little button that allows you to flip it um but it's super easy on paper just hold it up to the light to a window or something and you can even put it on the window backwards and then draw over on the back side of the paper and fix your mistakes um, I did that a lot, even professionally in, in client jobs. So um, that will help because there's a lot of, there, there's a little, you know, whoop, like crookedness with the face and stuff like that. And it will help you see the problems with anatomy too, which I, I think your anatomy looks pretty pretty good already. It's A lot of it's covered up, so I can't tell. But at least the structures there, um, the, the proportions I, I think are there. So, and I mean, this is, this is really neat looking. So I think that's just, it. it's just tightening up like things and swip, um, doing a mirror image of your images so that you can um, see any problems and you'll see them. Your eyes will pick them up really quickly. So, and you'll see what's going on. But I think this is a good, a good start. Um, please show me some pages of your comic once you start doing it next year. 
Dizzy Spells. We just published our 14th episode of Dizzy Spells on Webtoons today, and I was hoping you'd drop by and take a look. Art by Profess One. Words by Adam Kogan. Me. Dizzy Spells. This is a modern day tale of an aging bachelor wizard suddenly t- thrust into the father figure role when he's forced to take on a 16 year old apprentice. Things do not go down smoothly. Oh, that's nice. You guys, that is some nice work. Nice lighting. Nice composition. Nice uh, use of blacks. Cross-hatching. Nice background details. Characters. You guys, you guys are knocking it out of the park. This is good. Speaking of not going smoothly, um, Dizzy Spells has a long, strange journey. Okay. Oh, you're showing me the... Okay, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you for doing this. Growl. Okay, you guys make me want to see more. Let's go find the webtoons. Let's find the webtoons. Dizzy Spells. It's Dizzy Spells. Only 3,000 people have seen this. You guys are you guys are rocking it. And only 3,000 people have seen it on Webtoons. That's a tragedy. So is this going to be a comic book and then you've converted it to Webtoons is my question. It kind of looks like that's what you're going for. I know Webtoons is made for like you to look at it on your phone, but it makes it hard to look at it so close. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is great. I... That's a big old panel. Wait, does she have a leg that's wooden? No, that's a cane. <laughs> Look at that face. <laughs> <laughs> Some really good art. Okay, I've spent enough time just like Googling over your art. Googling. That word doesn't even mean the same thing anymore. Um, you guys go check out Dizzy Spells if you like that. Uh, it's on Webtoons. Um, thanks for posting it, guys. Hopefully, some people find it from this. Here's an ink drawing of a main character of my book. This is the first book I have ever worked on. I hope it, you folks like it. Dun, 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 dun. Hi. Oh wait, where's the book? I like the drawing. I think it looks good. I think this could work really good for a comic book. I want to see some panels. Yeah. I like it. I want to see some panels now. Show me some panels. And inked Thor. Look at that. Looks great. The weakest link that stands out to me is is the hands. But I shouldn't I shouldn't say anything because my hands are like the weakest link in my in my art, in my books, and a lot of times I draw them all wonky and weird, and I go, yeah, that's fine, I like it. <laughs> so, I think that's really neat, though. Good job. You could do that 100 days of hands, or 100 hand drawings, or something, whatever whatever people are doing these days. Pencils at Thor. Okay, so this is the same one. Good stuff. Whoa. There's kind of like a weird, like, uncanny valley realistic but not quite realistic because it's a sketch, you know? It's like some of the proportions are a little... Maybe it's because there's a photograph of a piece of paper, but let's see what he says. My first time attempting to draw realism. Also, now that you are done with Sithra, what project are you working on next? I would like it... I think it would be cool if you did something inspired by Christian. Christianity and spiritual warfare. Uh, that's what Sithra is about, kind of. But anyway, moving on. Either way, I'm super excited to see what's coming. Um, yeah, it's kind of... Um, that's what all my stories are about, basically. They're, they're, they're all grounded in my beliefs, which is Christianity. And spiritual warfare is a big theme in a lot of my stories, um, it might not just be like a angels and demons with swords f- fighting, but it kind of is. So yeah, I, I'm glad you're uh, wanting me to 
go that direction. Um, even Phobos, it's like it's a it's based on classic horror characters, which is one of my next books I'm working on. Um, it's based on the classic horror characters, but the whole the reason I wanted to do it is because uh, it's because I was I kept thinking, what would you know where does God fit into all of this? Like there's all these stories like Harry Potter and vampires and um, and whatever. Where does God, the the Christianity version of God, fit in with all this? You know, uh, if it if it would, and so that's kind of where Phobos is going. It's not it's not going there really fast. It's kind of in the second volume where I start diving into that. But once I dive into that, that's kind of that's kind of what it's about after that point. I mean, in a lot of ways. So this is cool. Nice realism. Um, I think the the head shape is a little kind of skewed, and so it's it's kind of like this eye is bigger than this eye, and so it's making it kind of like feel kind of warped and twisted. But there's elements of it that are really real, realistic, and then there's other elements that that obviously kind of fall short. But I think it's a great first attempt. I mean, bravo for the first try at doing realism. I'll see you guys in the next Brew Crew. What up, guys? Welcome to Brew Crew. I really hope you guys have been getting my notifications because I've been posting every day, and I think YouTube has something against me. They're really, you know, so I'm just joking. I haven't posted anything for ever. So um, I apologize if I haven't posted anything. It's because I've been working on this book called Shapes, as you can see right here. This is issue one. Um, you can actually go to comic shops right now and order issue one. It's coming out in November. Um, so please, this is this is my first official like floppy comic book, pamphlet comic. So um, yeah, check it out. I have a link below here. I posted a link to Previews World where you can see the, the number um, and whatever else you got to do to get a comic these days. Um, anyway, it's published by Cave Pictures Publishing, uh, written by me and Rick Reckadal, and I drew it and colored it along with my assistant. And uh, yeah, so there you go. Shapes, check it out. All right, let's 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 just uh, see what else is going on in Brew Crew. So I missed this one. This was like two months ago, so um, I apologize, but happy Father's Day two months ago. Um, cute little drawing, nice little owls. <laughs> And then there's another one that I talked about, but then my video crashed. So this is a graphic novel that a friend of mine is uh, drawing named Cord. And um, it looks really good. I'm really impressed with it, Cord. I, I say a friend of mine, but I just, I only know you, Cord, online. So uh, we've emailed like twice. So um, I'm really looking forward to this, not only because I really like the way the comic's looking. Um, I think the darks and the blacks are really nice and well done i think the character design is nice and simple and good and it's effective for what it's about or um, for the for the meat for the not the medium but the genre um i'm really curious to see this in color so if you have any color pages i'd love to see it cord if you if you, uh, you color it yourself or if you hire anyone wink wink i don't know why, i don't know why i winked I didn't even wink. I tried to wink. Um, so, yeah, please keep posting pages, Cord. I think this is cool. I'm especially excited once I figured out who's writing it. So um, I don't know if you're keeping that a secret, but uh, moving on. My first commission ever. Look at that. This is a commission. It's a good-looking commission. I like the eyeballs. are really nice. Um, this one's a little crooked. He has a little crooked eyeball right there. But the rest of the eyeballs look... Why am I focusing on eyeballs? It's like art school here. This is great, though. Um, I think you're doing a nice job. I like the split down the middle. I think you're you're choosing kind of where to focus more blocks of black and versus lines and stuff, which is good. I like the hair up here. Yeah. I think it's great. Someone, whoever paid you for this should be very happy with it. Are you going to ink it? Um, are you going to color it? Just curious. Um, good job, though. Comic book cover and first pages. So there's the cover. That looks nice. It's a nice, uh, simple 
catchy looking cover. Hi, Jason. You inspired me to finally start drawing a comic book. Here's a link uh, to my portfolio where I uploaded the cover and the first four pages. I have plans to translate it to English, but first I'm working on the Portuguese version because I'm from Brazil. Um, I would also would be so happy if you could critique it, what I've done so far. Please don't be afraid to be ruthless. I want to make the comic as beautiful and interesting as, interesting as I can. Love your channel and your art. And here's your Instagram. Okay, so... I think that's a great looking cover. Um, let me look at the link. Collection, line art, portraits, stickers. Uploaded the cover in the first four pages. Where's the cover, buddy? I need the cover. Well, let's look at these other ones. It's nice. Illustrations. Hey, maybe I'm just too late because, you know, because I'm too late. Am I too late? Did you take it down? I'm sad. I missed it. Anyway, uh, so I can't comment on the pages because I don't know where they are, but I do like this. I like the silhouette value. I think the girl's a nice touch. The chains, I mean, there's a lot of sim symbolic stuff in it. I don't know what it, it necessarily means, but it's intriguing and it makes me want to know, you know, more. So, uh, very curious. Um, I'd like to see more. And I'm sorry I didn't uh, comment on this two months ago when you posted it. Um Maybe send another link. Maybe you've already have. Maybe you've shown it again later on. We'll find out. All right. So we are back on this. Echoes of the Dark Forest, page two. Looks great. I like the, um, how the characters, the character pops, and even the, the brightness of this flower pops nicely over top of the, the dull, dark greens. Um, Good choices. I think the color choices are really good. I like it. Approve it and thumb, thumbs up. Can cognitive draw, drawing replace art teachers? Um, the goal of cognitive drawing isn't to replace art teachers, of course. They are very important to have. I agree. I'm not going to read this, but um, yeah, it's not to, re in my opinion, it's not to replace art teachers. Art teachers are necessary. Um, this is for the people um, who who may not have art teachers, you know what I'm saying? Like growing up when, where I grew up, uh, I had art teachers and I learned a lot from them, but there was, there was a depth that I wanted to get that I couldn't just do sitting with an art teacher. And what I realized how over the years, what I realized is there's, there's nothing that, that can replace you sitting down and spending hours and hours and hours, hundreds or thousands of hours by yourself drawing and practicing. And if people can't do that, then they're never going to succeed as an artist, whether they have a good art teacher or not. So, so this cognitive drawing book is to try to encourage people how to do that and encourage people to do that. You know, like, like your art teachers are great, but they're them practicing and knowing things isn't your practice. So, um, sorry, I, I appreciate this thought though, but, um, but yes, <laughs> if you guys are interested in cognitive drawing, you can get it on Gumroad, uh, gumroad.com backslash Jason Brubaker, and you can download cognitive drawing. Uh, it's like 12 bucks, I think, right now. <clears throat> Excuse me while I take a drink. An art I've done of an OC of mine. Very interesting. Are those ears or is that horns? Cool. I like it. Prove. This is by They Call Me Dizzy. What I would suggest, Dizzy, is um, working, um, studying folds, clothing folding. Um, I think that's the weakest link. The thing that stands out to me the most is these folds look, they're details that distract instead of feel like they're natural and part of the drawing. Um, I can see you want to add these folds in, and I'm all for folds. I love drawing folds, but um, unless they are, unless they make sense, um, then it, it kind of it starts uh, taking away from your art. Actually, there's a book I have. Let me pause this real quick. So there's this book here, Drawing People, How to Portray the Clothed Figure. Um, and this is really, really important because... Um, when you see people walking around, they're in clothes, you know, unless you're at a nudist colony or something. But 
so 90% of the time, it's about, you know, learning anatomy with clothing. So uh, I, I really like this book. Um, so it, it, it's, it's one way you can learn it. I mean, look at those clothes. Like, what? How do you know how to draw that? Wrinkles? How the, fold, the folds go over the body? Okay. So that's what I would suggest. Studying something like that, getting a book like that, um, and really devouring it. I would suggest that. Other than that, I love your original character design. I think it's a good start. My new studio in South Beach. Oh, man. You people with your studios. <laughs> Just joking. I guess I have a studio, too. I'm going to fast forward to see the studio. Is it this? That's a sweet studio right there. Oh, man. I remember living on Venice Beach, and I'd just go out every day and just hang out. Okay. Love the vlogs, man. Um, I need to make some more vlogs on my channel. Darn it. Approve. Keep keep going. Hope your YouTube channel is growing like crazy and faster than mine, hopefully. I've been working on this comic a while, and I'm always looking for new ways to improve. If you have any critiques or advice, I'd greatly appreciate it. <laughs> My voice. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so it's a Webtoons comic. Okay, let's just start in the middle somewhere. Huh? Dun, dun, dun. Ah! <laughs> Okay, so this is this is my suggestion. Um, it looks to me like you you colored it on the same layer as your inks. Um, look into using multiply in Photoshop, because then you, and and using layers so that you don't have these white outlines around things. Um, I can see it. I can kind of see it here too. It's. Uh, I mean, there's multiple ways that this could have happened, like the white outlines around things. But um, and it, you must you must be doing something with multiply. But um, there's just parts that look kind of sloppy, like it's not completely finished properly. I love that it it almost is it is it pencil, or is it just like a a marker that's not fully saturating the paper? I can't tell. It's a it's good. I I like the style. I just think you need to put a little more time into it. Um, things like this panel, it's like, yeah, I know you want to get the, the, the image out there and move on, but this is more like a storyboard panel to where, you know, you, no one's supposed to see it, but it's just to give the production and crew like an idea of what the shot's about. Um, at least that's what it reminds me of. Whereas this stuff up here, this, this is a little more finished, you know, there's some sloppiness in the background, which, which works for it. This is so stylistic right here that it works. It works really well. Oh, and this works well too. But then you get into this and then it looks like, oh wait, okay, this isn't finished and there's some and there's some kind of like amateur type uh, coloring jobs done and then this big word balloon that just kind of takes up everything. So I think a big problem with um, a lot of artists is is not a problem with artists. There's big problems with artists these days, guys. I'm not saying that. Um, you know, just, it's not a race, like take, take your time to, to make sure things are consistent, especially if you're trying to, to kind of win eyes and win views is you, you gotta kind of look consistent from the start. I mean, you gotta look consistent when you're presenting stuff. Otherwise it looks like you're just, you're maybe copying this from someone else and then you don't have any reference for this. So you, it looks bad. And then this, it's like, you know what I'm saying? You you want to make sure that it your stuff is consistent. Now there's a once you get really good at, at different styles, that's when you can experiment with changing and having the consistency go all over the place, like Fooly Cooly and stuff like that, like the anime. Um, but but they knew how to do all those styles. So I would say really lock into the style you want to choose. Um, Put a little bit more time into the panels that you do want to rush through, and um, and and keep going, man. Because I I do see a really neat style in your work. Um, if it was just a little, if a little more time was put into it, it would be really enjoyable to look at. Um, 
Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. I know, and I know Webtoons really rewards speed over quality. Um, and I think that's a big problem. So it's teaching artists the wrong thing. Like, yeah, you know, you can just scribble on a wall and take a picture and, and you're done. You've made a million dollars, but no, like, like really invest that time into it. Make it beautiful, you know, make it so like, what's that book name by Cal Newport? Make it so good that they can't, that it can't be ignored. Be so good that you can't be ignored. Something like that. So at least that's what you should strive towards, I think. But it's a great uh, start, you know. So keep going, please. This is Spawn. I recently completed for an upcoming issue of 300 release. And that's really nice. I really like this moon glow on the on the cape right there. Boom, this white glow. I thought it would be fun to post the work and get some thoughts from the artists of it. I have loved and respected for years. Please let me know what you think and look forward to the feedback. I th I think the only thing I would do if it was me, I would I would not have every square inch of it be filled with something, you know, like like I would put a little bit more empty space at least in a little area here and there. Um, I I see a lot of comic artists. They just jam details into every square inch, and um, and it's it good. It's good, but if you can jam detail into seventy five percent of the square inches, and then have no detail in twenty five percent, then it's going to it's going to allow you to. I don't know. There's just something special about that. Completely, <laughs> I don't. I'm not making any sense, am I? So, um, but that's, that would be my suggestion. But I think that you did great with the colors and everything. Everything's great, though. Okay, the only thing that kind of bothers me is this chain. It's really kind of this foreground chain. Nothing bad, though. Nothing that I would say fired for. But anyway, oh, boy. A mini comic featuring an unusual artist uh, from Lev Comics. Hmm. Eh? Well, hello, my fellow citizen. I just barely noticed you there. Now go, now go look somewhere else. Nothing to see here. Don't you see I'm busy? Busy admiring my amazing creation. Meanwhile, dun 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 dun. That's cool. Good looking stuff. This character is so bizarre. Like, I don't even know what to make of it. Is it a robot? Is it an alien? Is it a stoplight? I see a little stoplight on his hat. Is it Stoplight City? Stoplight World? Very cool. Lev illustration. Enjoying his snack break. <laughs> munch, munch, munch. <laughs> I can't wait to see more of this comic. Approve. Lost on Planets. This content is for mature audiences. You must be 18 years of age or to view it. Site contains language, images, and concepts that are for adult audiences only. No, sorry. I'm not 18. At least I'm not making 18 or over content. So uh, I'm sorry I won't look at it on my YouTube channel. But keep it up. Hopefully it's good. <laughs> <clears throat> Long time lurker. First time poster. So this is my graphic novel I'm working on. Carpenter. It's a it's about a vampire who grew up in the 40s and for and fought alongside a superhero team. Since then, her friends and family either got too old, retired, or died. Now she wanders through life trying to figure out her place in the modern world. It's a story about love, identity, and where to find it. If I can get your opinions on it and developing the art style for the comic, I really appreciate the first image. Look at that. She looks like a Nosferatu. Cover one, cover two, I guess. Ooh, I like the graininess. I like the background, the, the the out of focus, but it's done with that kind of lens that makes everything look like circles. <clears throat> Whatever. I don't know what I'm talking about. Cool. And colors and light. Very nice. And these pages. Carp. Did it say carp? Good body language. Cool. Yeah, I like it. I think it's an interesting look. 
there's some really neat things you're doing there and some neat images and um i'd like to see some pages in sequence so keep keep posting keep showing me long tail comic long tailed comic i think my original post wasn't posted i lost it anyways thank you mr brubaker for being such a huge inspiration and teacher if you're interested in joining whether the journey click here webtoons dun, dun. comic is b and w since i don't have time to public everything weekly i don't know what that means currently publishing chapters weekly okay let's just go look at it oh it's black and white it's so misleading oh is that why you said it was black and white <laughs> long-tailed I like the I like the image there all right guys i'm guessing this is where where bruce is Okay, I'm not going to read it. Look at that. Nice, nice screen tones. I want to learn how to do that. I know you can just do it in Manga Studio or Clip Studio, but I haven't ever tried. Looks great. Good expressions, characters. So is this, I'm curious if, the, if, if this is like a manga that you converted to the Webtoons format or if you're doing it primarily for Webtoons. Um, Long-tailed. If you guys are interested, check it out. Good stuff. New character design. This is my first submission here, so I will post my comic sheet here. Thumbs up. Follow me on Instagram. Mad Hand Art Design. One, two, three, four. Looks good. Let's try this Instagram. Instagram. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. I like this one here. A little elephant. It's cool. You know what I suggest? Based on what I see, I would suggest doing more drawings like this, where it's the lines. No shading. Don't don't get caught up in the shading and getting all that detail in there. Try just doing sketches that are lines. Um, quick sketches that are lines. I mean, this is kind of there, but you're still doing a lot of cross cross hatching and shading. You know all the all, all this. Um, and just see if you can knock out a whole pile of sketches, like, of, of, of characters, of, um, postures, of running and jumping, you know, um, with just lines and not focusing on the detail. I think you're focusing too much on detail and color and finished work, um, before really, before putting in the time with the line work. So, that's my suggestion. You can throw it out the window if you want. But when I see stuff like this, I'm like, yes, this guy's a good artist. And then and then some of the other stuff, I'm like, well, he needs to do more of this stuff. So that, that doesn't make sense, does it? Um, but but you, you have all the tools, I can see. You know, you have the computer and the software and all that stuff. But I think you just need to put more time into doing more sketches like this, you know? Not, not really focusing, again, on shading and details, but just do sketches. Sketches. Learning learning to sketch um hopefully that helps I, I hope that's not confusing um great looking stuff though keep keep working at it i'm gonna do one more all right let's just do one more okay <laughs> character illustrations from future romance comic future romance eh cool it's looking nice she's like yeah and she's like, oh, I like her snotty attitude. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, looks good, guys. Welcome to Brew Crew, everybody. I hope you will uh, indulge in looking through artwork with me. Incredible. Another one by Charles, who is a Patreon. First page of Mindscape Stories on Webtoons. Feedback, really welcome. Let's check it out. Mindscape Stories. For as he thinks in his heart, so he is. Proverbs 23, 7. Nice. I like the style. I really like the style. Location unknown. I think we should have thought through this a little better. We? We? What do you mean we? Hey, you two, come here. I like it. I really like it. It's really a neat style, really neat look. I like the sloppiness of it. The I mean the looseness of it. I would say keep going. I wouldn't I wouldn't change a thing yet. I would keep going, get a bunch of pages done in the style that you're visualizing here, in the style you're seeing. I'd say keep going in this style, 
don't let anyone influence you to tighten it up yet until you get a bunch of stuff done. Maybe get, you know, 20 pages done, and then you can kind of assess it as a whole and, and see if there's certain things you want to change. Um, like, like this face down here in the bottom corner is, that's probably, I think, as rough as you want to get. At first, I thought it was the back of someone's head, but now I think it's the eyes and the nose. So, you know, but I think that kind of stuff can grow on you as long as you do it right. So I, I really do like it, though. I I think there's a lot of neat things happening. It might be a little rough around the edges for some people, but um, like, I mean, some of these panels are just so strong. They're really strong. So that's my thoughts. I like it. Keep going. First time using manga screen tones. I need some crits. Other bird man posted this screen tones. I I guess it's just the background. Is it just the background or is it, oh the hair has screen tone too? I can't tell if there's screen tone in the character much other than the hair. Uh, because it's so fine. I don't know. But then there's a background screen tone which. I'm assuming it's supposed to look pixely, but it looks pixely, but with screen tone within the pixels. I'm confused, but I like it. I don't have any problems with it. <laughs> Excuse me. I think you're doing good. I don't know how to use screen tones, so I think you're ahead of me. Nice work. Proof. Bruce Krager, webcomic original character, Riley. My favorite of the characters. I would like to, I would like Jason's review posting this because I used the wrong account previously. She is very pink. <laughs> is that the skin? I guess that would be the skin. That's the first thing that stood out is, wow, she looks almost like sunburnt. Like she was out in the sun and those arms are just going to start peeling tomorrow. I like the bulkiness of the suit and the armor and the, 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 the depth of the the dimension dimensionality is that a word of like the suit the armor and how it kind of wraps around her body and stuff i'm kind of having trouble understanding how the suit looks but i don't need to i'm i guess that a turnaround or seeing more poses of the character would solve that gun looks cool the eye you know the the eyes okay i think the reason the skin looks so bright to me is because you can see her eyes through here, but it's all grayed out. And yet you see the neck. And in the shadow of the neck, it's really bright, really saturated. And then in the eyes, there's nothing. It's You know, I, I understand like your the screen, the visor is taking away all that color. At least that's what the theory is. But um, I would assume you would see some of that color, that pink color through the visor, if you're going to be able to see the eyes that clearly. If you're not going to be able to see the eyes that clearly, then I would I would be able to be a little bit more comfortable saying, yeah, that's the color of the visor. But since you can see the eyes, it just it suddenly makes this pink like boom, like whoa. You know? Does that make sense? Great stuff. First issue of my latest comic is all on tapas and webtoons now. Feedback much appreciated. Wait, is this have I seen this one before? I have. Why am I? Okay, I remember you tricked me into saying, saying certain words. It's a great looking webcomic. The Graves. The Graves. Oh, I remember. I remember you, Dragon Lore One. I remember your, I think you were the one who asked, should I be doing a comic in this style? And I said, yes. At least that's what I think based on this drawing. That's, am I right? Is this the right, am I thinking of the right person? <laughs> I don't know. Let me click on your name. Maybe there's more. Yes, it was this one. I remember. Okay, look at that. I actually recognized you just from the style of your art. That's pretty impressive. Looks great, man. I'd say I'd say keep going. I like your art, the style of your art, but I just the thing I don't like is the blurriness of the brushes that you're using. I think it's fine to use blurry brushes in some cases, but when you're doing lines like this, it just oh my goodness, it hurts my eyes. Ah! And so um it makes me not want to study it very long, but you're you're you have the ability to lay down beautiful lines. Your craft is there. I think it's just the wrong brushes. I think you want to get brushes with hard edges. They can they can fade from lighter to darker, but that edge needs to not be blurry. At least in my opinion, it's some it's one of my pet peeves, and so I I just gotta say it. But I think your style and your characters and your drawing 
since is beautiful. Okay. So I think the brushes are just hurting you. Um, Lady Mick Hua Wang here, Ellie and the Grimlore. Ooh, some art I made for a young adult book I am writing. I tend to draw whenever I have writer's block and I'm trying to learn how to better work in Photoshop. I, I may tweak this into a book cover for fun. Critiques much appreciated. I am the patron whose Sithra Kickstarter got lost in the post office for three years. <laughs> yeah, so I got a return. Funny story. I got a return in the mail for one of my Kickstarter books. And I thought it was for Sithra 4. Um, and I was like, oh, I got to figure out who this is from and try to mail it back. And, you know, one of the last Scraggler books. Um, and I looked it up and I was like, I looked up the back and forth communication and I had already sent off books and, and already, you know, everything was already received. And I was like, what is going on? And so I finally look at the package again and it's from like the date on it is 2016. And I was like, are you kidding me? The post office was holding on to this package for like three years. It was just lost for three years and then they returned it finally. Anyway, funny story. Ha ha. Funny to everyone except for me. That's neat. I like the white trees in the background mixed with the trees in the foreground. It's it's like so like dense with branches and stuff, but it works. It works well. I like it. I really like it. And then the dog, the black dog, you have the little white, white line around the dog so he pops out. It's really cool. Interesting style. I don't really have any critiques. Nothing really pops out as, as wrong or weird. Maybe the only thing I would, might, would probably cut out if it was me would be like this, the little tree branches overlaying on this. I think it just... Since they're all in the same tones of gray, it kind of gets a little muddy. Other than that, I think I think it's really an interesting style. Look at that waist. So much muscle. TP11. A thing I made for So Sigwa? Sigaudra. Sigodarna. I don't know what that is. What is Sigwadarna? Sigwadarna is a trend started by Filipino artists interpreting Darna, our fictional comic hero, through their own understanding. As a fellow artist, I felt the urge to share this with you guys. Hope you guys like it. Darna is Darna like a Superman type character. How interesting. Looks great. I like it. Good job. I wish I knew a little bit more about it so I could, uh, I could understand it. So it's just kind of like an interpretation of an existing character. Let's go, who is Darna? Darna Wikipedia. That's Darna. So it's kind of like a Wonder Woman. So this is Darna. I see. I can see why she's popular. Uh-huh. It all makes sense now. <laughs> okay, so that's Darna. It's a Filipino comic character. And this is the year interpretation. Very cool. I like how you made her a little more modest, even. <laughs> Approved. How to make a strong first impression in the first chapter of Webtoons. Not my comic. Uh-oh. What's the strong first impression? Simzy Art streams on Twitch daily. What's very interesting as I would like to share how is how much actually happens in the first chapter. A strong gun to the face of our protagonist gets our attention fast. Transition of her problems. No need to have some long introduction who she is. We're going to learn her character throughout the story. Anyways, the quick introduction of this other world at the end. I, I think it's a good reference example for what makes a good first impression. First character grabs the viewer's attention. I think I'm totally on board with what you're saying. I want to see this now that you introduced it that way. So I've always been a big advocate of like, stop telling me all this backstory. Stop telling me the rules of the universe. Stop telling me, you know, about this race of aliens that comes and invades the planet and then there's a special briefcase that has houses some nice crystals from another galaxy who cares no one knows anything about this world you don't want to bore people from the start you want to have a character that people can engage with and get into from the very start and so maybe that's what this is going to be about and i sure think it will be let's see for sure though okay maybe i made some wrong choices click
but I had to find a way to get to New Zealand. And it seems like I almost made it. <laughs> I just had to avoid being fired. I have to fire you. You broke dishes, tea services, and you suffocated three customers. Three! My restaurant is high class, beloved, dreamed of. <laughs> For anyone else, this would be so easy. But you're a nightmare! <laughs> you're ruining my precious business, my pride and joy. And it's only Thursday! Why is it always the opposite for me? Get out! I just don't understand. The phone is not for your leisure. Fired! If you try, you'll succeed, they said. She's not fireproof. Fired! Cough, cough. I was beginning to think. She's not fireproof. Fired! That my commitment wasn't a prop the problem. What are you still doing here? Fired! How was I supposed to know that was the same restaurant, Auntie? Of course I'm trying. Keeping a job here isn't as easy as you think. No, I won't change my mind. Okay, bye. I love the style of the artwork. I, except for the blurry lines. If the lines weren't blurry, there's some blurriness to them. That it just hurts my eyes, I think. But it's a very digital type thing. Digital artists don't seem to, don't seem to care. I, I still love it, though. I'm not knocking it. I still love it. And this person walks by. Kiwis eat. I like the highlights on her hair. Hmm. What a great drawing. Just so good. Home delivery. This could be my chance. Hey, excuse me. Uh? What the? Uh, what am I doing? I need to stop asking for trouble. Ah! Fate didn't seem to give me a choice. I fell. And I landed somewhere far away. That's cool, that effect. I really like this. And who would you be? Identify yourself. This is an area reserved for staff only. I, uh, well... Without authorization, an Omega-3 protocol goes into effect. And ye, you'll be eaten. Biglia, stop! It's her first day. Okay, so... That was like, how many pages? Eight pages. And you already got the hero forced into the journey. And you already you already get to see <laughs> what normal life was like for, wow. It's, so yeah, this is, this is a great example of just really propelling the audience into the story. Beautiful art, beautiful, really good storytelling. And you already kind of feel for the character. You already, and then it's, you're in this world. By who? Oh, you are Sim, Sim Z art. Neat stuff. Okay, I've spent too much time on this comic. So I agree. I think it's a great, it's a great first uh, impression. Mitty and the Cafe. I asked how to pronounce this, and I think you even told me, but I'm still forgetting. I'm assuming you use something like Google SketchUp. Am I right? I began to learn how to draw backgrounds, environments, and scenes. This also me experimenting with designing a world for the first chapter. For the chat for this chapter you can see more of my stuff over here it's great it's neat that you're putting all that work into figuring all that out and designing it good job my first web comic from conjo something briar world on webtoons hello everyone my name is wendy molden and i'm a comic artist from argentina nice to meet you for the past few months i've been working with my friend derek kunskin on our first webcomic, Briar World. He is a writer and me on art. And this past Tuesday, we finally posted the first chapter. I'm super excited. I wanted to share it and, and to ask for feedback too. This is the page version. And then on Webtoons is the Webtoons version. Let me, I'm just curious how the Webtoons version looks. Kingdom of Aurora. See that? Nice. You're cutting it all up into little chunks so that it can go a lot longer. I mean, that's a lot different than... Yeah, so you're kind of started in there, and then you cut down into here. Uh huh, uh huh. I see what you're doing. Approved. It's a cool style when I see it up close. It was almost too much detail far away on this on screen, so it's good that you zoomed into it like this. I think it's working really well. Zoom out. It's a pleasure to meet you, Your Grace. Hmm. Your promptness is appreciated. You paid for it. I pay for secrecy and success. The infinite, infant, fent, infant is missing. The heir to the throne is missing? What has the ray ordered? Infant Simon secretly left Aroa 12 days ago. 
He went to Briar World. I love the style here. That's so interesting. You lost him in Briar World? Uh, mind your tongue, mercenary. I didn't lose him. The idiot went there for love. Oh, I'm such a horrible reader. Can I just stop reading? What an interesting different style. I like the glows behind it on that panel. That's neat. Very cool. Oh, you guys got a bunch of stuff on here now. I've been slow. You bad guys have been busy. It's really neat. Really different style. It's a lot of work, too. All right. Um, that's cool. Thanks for showing me and everybody. Hopefully, guys, if you guys like this, check it out. Go to um, Slink Webtoons. Search for Briar World. I wrote an essay on the literary potential of comics. Jason Bernard. Oh, Jason, this must have been what you were trying to tell us about in the last Patreon video call, and then your your video went out right in the middle of it. So obviously I'm not going to be able to read this online, but let's go look at it. We're definitely not going to read this together. Can comics be literature? That is the topic. If you guys want to read J uh, Jason Bernard's essay, click on this link. Jesus Crucifixion. Instagram Bruce Krager. It's a nice image. It's like a a manga Jesus. I like the lighting. You did a great job on the lighting, and it's just very subtle here, but the highlights are the brightest part. So it makes this light feel like it's real. A lot of foreshortening going on with the arms. That's great. Good job. I almost think the the hand here is a little too foreshortened if you compare it to this to the cross. You would almost have to have this be, you know, a lot bigger in order to make that hand feel right, feel that foreshortened, either that or shrink down the hand. But I, I like that you, I like the detail in the hand, so I would assume making cross bigger. It's just like in comparison, this hand to this hand. It works, but it's just, something feels wrong with it. Here's where this piece and this piece meet, right? And here it stops here. Technically this would go and stop about there, I think, but, you extended this so you could see the hand. So what I would do, if this was my piece and I could revise it, I would extend this out so that it could get to that size. Move this hand out here, and then you know you have the arm and then the hand, right? And I think that would feel more accurate. But I think as far as like the the light source and the detail, I think you nailed it. I think you did really good. It's just the perspective is the thing that's throwing me off a little bit. That's my only complaint, but I don't want to complain too much about Jesus. So uh, I will say it's perfect. 